it so nice and low really now. now. You really should fly. Light up the night. Southwest Airlines fun fares are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just for the fun of it. Welcome to sparkling new Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Tonight the Wolves continue their assault towards number one overall. They're only seven points behind Long Beach heading into tonight's game against a very difficult foe in the Grand Rapids Griffins. Hello again everybody, I'm Judd Surratt. Joined by Wolves goaltender Wendell Young because my normal partner Jim Blaney is on assignment. And first and foremost, Wendell, how is the ankle and when can Wolves fans expect you back? Well, Judd, the ankle's come along really well. Uh, I had x-ray last Monday and they found there's a fracture in my ankle. So uh, the time uh, scale has been a little uh, changed a little bit. But hopefully I'll take shots on Monday and uh, hopefully be playing by uh, next weekend. Wendell, as we look at the LaSalle Bank storyline for tonight's game, the Wolves have two significant new additions to the lineup, some big offensive players in Steve LaRouche and Mark Rogers. The two players, uh, Kevin Shoveldayoff, hadn't made a move all year, and he makes an explosive trade in uh, LaRouche and Rogers, uh, pulling them into the lineup. They've made a move, uh, the Wolves have made a move where you, you put 45 goals into the lineup. And that's a rarity in hockey these days when you don't take anybody out of your lineup and you add them uh, to your lineup without uh, affecting, uh, basically taking uh, any goals out of your lineup and adding 45. Wendell, tonight for the Wolves, they're going to have to pick up a win against Grand Rapids and really trying to make their assault up the Western Conference standings without their two best goaltenders since you and, and Stefan Beauregard are out, and that means Ray LeBlanc has to get some wins. Exactly. Ray has to get some wins. Uh, Richards has stepped in and got some wins. Uh, Ray really stepped in on the, on, on the game in Indianapolis, uh, coming up with a big game, some big saves in, in crucial times within the game. Uh, you know, Ray has had a great career here. He's come up with some big games in crucial times for the team in the past. So it's a situation where I think Ray steps up to that. If Ray gets off to a good start, gets some saves early, that's the key to Ray. If he uh, gets some goals by him early, uh, it really hurts Ray's confidence. Tonight, LeBlanc and the Wolves will be facing a Grand Rapids team that's gone through a coaching change. They're missing a key offensive player. The guy they have to watch out for is awesome, and that's Michelle Picard. That's exactly. When you're, in the, when you're in the dressing room and you go over the other team's lineup, you look at certain players and key players to, to key on, and uh, Picard is the one guy you really have to key on in this Grand Rapids team. Uh, you know, they, with Mark Craig out of the lineup, uh, it's going to affect their power play. It's really going to affect their power play. Uh, you know, you got to key on them, look for him uh, from from the Grand Rapids team, they're going to key for, for Picard to be shooting a lot. He has a lot of shots on, on goal, and also the Chicago Wolves are going to key on him to kind of play him a little tighter, and especially on the power play. Wendell, the last time you and the Wolves were in this building, the Wolves got waxed 7-1, and don't think that this team hasn't forgotten about that game. They have a score to settle tonight. Tonight's broadcast of Chicago Wolves Hockey is brought to you by Craftsman Tools, official tools of the Chicago Wolves, and by Coca-Cola, always great on ice, always Coca-Cola and by the energy companies of Nikkor. Make yourself comfortable. And by your local Chevy dealers, people you can trust when you're looking for a great car value. And by your neighborhood 7-Eleven store. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. And by Jiffy Lube, Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana's favorite oil change. Drive in, drive out, drive on. And by Clark, Clark on the go, great gas, great price. And by Anheuser-Busch, brewers of Bud Ice and Bud Ice Light. Stay with us, the starting lineups and the opening face-off when we return. This is Chicago Wolves Hockey. Chicago sports fans are known across the country for their savvy. What's the primary source of that savvy? The savviest sports writing team in Chicago, the staff of the Chicago Sun-Times sports section. It's a team that writes with style and substance. A team that doesn't just cover, but uncovers, too. A team that's concise, precise, and feisty. Come on now, get savvy. Get hold of the Sun-Times today. So good, it hurts. Slurpee, the coolest thing on earth.
Chevrolet starting lineup tonight for the Chicago Wolves. Up front, at center it will be Steve LaRouche on the right side, Mark Rogers on the left side, Steve Malte back in goal, Ray LeBlanc, Bob Nardella, and Tom Tilly on the blue line. The scratches tonight for John Anderson. There's a few. Kevin Dahl is out with a sore shoulder. He should hopefully be back in tomorrow, if not early next week. Doug Baralt, a healthy scratch, as is Tim Bergman. Reveal Guzmanov still bothered by a bad back. Stefan Beauregard and Wendell Young also out of the lineup. Our 3E e lithographing goaltending matchup. Pitts Ray LeBlanc, 6-3-0, 287 goals against average. He is 1-1-0 against Grand Rapids this year with a sparkling 201 goals against against Ian Gordon, who was basically lost in the Calgary Flames organization until he came here. Gordon, 21, 15, and 1, 272 goals against average, a save percentage of 90.5%. He represented Grand Rapids at the IHL All-Star Game in February that took place at the Orlando Arena. The head coach of the Chicago Wolves in his first season behind the bench is John Anderson. And in my mind, has to be a contestant for Coach of the Year in the International Ladies Hockey League with the job that he has done. His counterpart, the general manager, for the Grand Rapids Griffins is Bob McNamara, who has recently added the head coaching duties. McNamara is 4-2-3 and three since Dave Allison was fired. Allison wrote a letter to ownership basically stating that McNamara was not doing enough to get this team in position to win a Turner Cup, and ownership sided with McNamara. The officials for tonight's contest, the referee is Scotty Zuck, and the local guy, the linesman Al Stensland, and Patrick Dunn. Steve LaRouche will step in and take the face off against Ed Patterson, and we're underway. Far side at center ice, Richards will turn it back into his own zone. Near circle, Nelson, rink wide to Richards. Flips it ahead up the far side and back into the Wolves zone. LeBlanc holds it at the far post, now pushes it in the far corner, picked off by Patterson. Back of the net, puck skips by one of the Griffins players, and Malte. Had it stripped, Nardella now gets it back, flips ahead, and here come the Wolves, three on two if they hurry. Center circle, Rogers over the line, right side, now to Tilly. Tilly, right circle. Centers, just wide on a deflection by LaRouche. Along the near side now, Cole leads ahead. Rukti had it intercepted. Grand Rapids gets it back near side, and then they in turn cough it up. Bob Nardella tried to rip it in, that deflected off his stick, and back into the Wolves zone. Tilly, long left wing feed for Malte. He shovels it down to the left corner. Both teams finishing some changes. Back of the net, Petirshan rolls it up the near side and back into the Wolves zone. Near circle, Matty Martin. Martin stops, banks it off the left wing boards and to the Griffins line. Near circle, their captain, Kerry Huffman, feeds it up the middle, far side in the neutral zone. Boivin taps ahead, Metropolitan to the high slot. Right circle, Picard walks in, taken down by Martin. Rudely, behind the net now, Godinia. Tapped it ahead, Martin. Martin takes it out to the neutral zone, Pearson. Over the line, left side, Scotty Pearson. Centers, Baker shoots, Gordon the save. Far corner, Godinia, in deep. Now far corner, Batirshan lays the body on Baker. Far side now, Cmac pulls free. Far corner, Baker cycles, right circle. Drills it behind the net. Pearson battling out in front with Huffman. Near side, Huffman flipped it ahead, couldn't get it by Pearson. Now the Griffins roll it ahead and to the far side of the neutral zone, Sean Talaire into the center circle. Crisscrossing, slides it over to the far corner. And we have a whistle and there will be an infraction apparently on the Wolves. 1805 remains in the first and we're scoreless one. Very impressive with the Chicago Wolves. Twice already in the first part of the game, they've gone to the net. LaRouche went to the net, Baker went to the net, and basically untouched. The, the defensemen were next to them, but untouched. And what was even more impressive on the Chicago Wolves side in their, in their defensive side of the game, Picard, what we spoke about earlier, went to the net, and Matt Martin took him out very hard. So it's a key to go after Picard, go after Picard and go from there. Here he is cutting to the net, he cuts the net, Matt Martin just keeps his feet going, he gets planted and takes him right into the boards. Grand Rapids will head to the power play. Jamie Baker into the box for the Wolves, the 155 mark. And while Grand Rapids is not a strong offensive team, they rank 15th in the league, they've been excellent on the power play. High slot Richard shoots block. Up the left side, out at center ice. 
Hooked it up left wing and back behind Gordon. Back in it, Breslin steals. Breslin, far side, not a Tilly at the far point. Right circle, Tilly. Backhand, Gordon! And that one hit the post, and then Breslin was driven into the net, and we have a stop in play. The Wolves had a shorthanded goal on Thursday. They were gunning for another there. Once again, uh, you, you see the players going to the, even on the shorthanded situation, they go to the net. Tim Breslin went to the net. There was a, a, a break in the play by uh, Tilly. He moves it in. Very impressed with the Chicago Wolves already. They're going on the aggressive side, and I think as a, as a being the opposition of the Chicago Wolves, I'd be a little worried with who's in the lineup right now. Tim Breslin complaining at the end of that that he felt there should have been an infraction called, and Ian Gordon coming up with a good save on a difficult shot that got deflected Swindle. That's exactly. Gordon, it's a tough situation when you're down and, and there's a defenseman in front of you, and it doesn't matter what type of shot comes at you. The Wolves able to kill off 30 seconds of this power play. Over the line, high slot. Metropolit lost it. The ah! Wolves slide it up the near side and out to the neutral zone. Their leader on the power play, Mark Gregg, is a scratch. He's got a bad hand. He leads them with nine. Picard and Travis Richards, a defenseman, each have six. Picard over the line, left side, flips it out in front. Taken near circle by Martins. Able to muscle his way free from a hook and drill it down the length of the ice. The Wolves will change their killers. Near circle now, Richards up the right side, Metropolitan. Return center circle to Richards, up at the red line. Blast it in the left corner, around it comes to the near side. Breslin sees it, try to dish it back to Vial. Dennis Vial in the near corner. Being bothered by Metropolitan. Near corner, Picard. Near point, Huffman. Near side, Picard. Watched by Vial. Near point, Huffman. Near circle, Tilly couldn't intercept it. Back of the net now, Metropolitan. Near corner, Picard. Watched to the near point. Picard looking around. Goes rink wide, deflected in the air, and Potvan chops it out to the neutral zone. 30 seconds remains in the minor to Baker. Over the line, right side now is Metropolitan. Right corner, Picard. Picard turns away from some of the traffic, sets up along the half wall. Picard, near side, took a chop from the out. Rink wide of the far circle, deflected wide on a drive there by Shane Knighty. And the Wolves clear it down the length of the ice. Behind the net now, Gordon shovels it over to the far side. Greg Bullock, recently acquired from the Toronto organization. Chicago it's around to check, and to the center circle as Baker is out of the box. Long drive, LeBlanc the save, rebound LeBlanc again, and he swats the rebound out of the way. Far side now, Talaire coughed it up, the Wolves scooted ahead, and right wing in the neutral zone, LaRouche. Wrists one to the near corner. 15.45 remains in the first. We're scoreless here, the Wolves and Griffiths. Godinia, near circle of his own zone, blasts it up the near side, out to center ice. LaRouche taps ahead, Rogers over the line, left side to Malte. Shoots Gordon, look behind him, and he's able to retrieve it. 15 and a half remains in the first, and we're scoreless. This is Chicago Wolves hockey. Bruce and Maltez are creating some offense here, and you're going to see Steve Maltez take a lot more shots. As he comes down the wing, he's got a little bit more space, and uh, Steve Maltez is a hard shot coming down. And, uh, Ian Gordon had a tough time taking that shot up high. Malte leading the league in shots, and he ripped one there looking for goal number 40. Two minutes for obstruction hooking, and two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. Bullock off for hooking, and then gave a little lift to Scotty Zelkin, so the Wolves will have a four-minute power play as Bob Nardella could not keep that puck in, and the faceoff will come back into the neutral zone. Wolves fans, you can now order one of three season ticket packages for the 98-99 season. The Wolves are offering full season, half season, and quarter season plans. Reserve yours now. For more information or to put a deposit on 98-99 season tickets, call 1-800-THE-WOLVES. Wolves power play fourth in the league. They've generated seven man advantage tallies in the last four games. Seaman, backhand pass blindly, got picked off. He gets it back near side the neutral zone and he rips it in. Over at the far corner. Taking it behind the net is Tolaire. Bangs it up the middle and down the length of the ice. Grand Rapids ranks fifth in the league defensively, but penalty killing 16th at only 80 and a half percent. Center circle Seamack. Oh, and apparently they're going to call a two-line pass here, and that will bring the face off back towards the Chicago end. Bob McNamara's club has really retained the same system even though Dave Allison is gone, and it's a system that works for them, Wendell. It is a system that works for them, and you're going to look for a, a very, very tight game. They're a tight-checking team. They're a low-scoring team, so they have to play that tight-checking game. A lot of their games are, are by one goal. In fact, 
Each of their last 10 has been decided by a goal or less. Picard able to flick it back to his own line. Knighty looking around and he drills it back into the Wolves zone. Tom Tilly behind his net as the Wolves fan out. Steve Malte grabs it, he leads the league with 20 on the man advantage, left it for Nardella into the center circle, over the line, left side, Nardella, high slot, Tilly couldn't hold it. Tilly got it back, far point Malte, forced, and it slipped up the far side and out, a race for the puck. Patterson over the line, far side, shoots off the post. Back at his own line, now Nelson up the far side and he drills it down the length of the ice. LeBlanc stops it behind the net. The Wolves with 2.45 remaining on the double minor to Bullock. Left side at center ice, Nardella into the center circle of the line, high slot. Almost had it poked away, Rogers got it low. Back of the net now Malte. Had the puck roll on him near corner LaRouche as the Wolves finally get a chance to set up. Near point Nardella, feeds left to the net, deflected by Rogers over to the far side. Malte grabs it. Malte settles things now at the far point. Walks to the top right circle, LaRouche shoots, blocked. Rebound in the slot, Huffman dives down and Muscles went out to the neutral zone and it wobbles back to the near circle of the Wolves end. The Wolves change a few players, left side at center ice now Malte. Over the line, left side. Drives it over to the opposite corner. Trebojevic cranked it up the far wall and back into the Wolves zone, LeBlanc will stop it. Well, they've killed off the first minor, now they're on to the second one. 157 remains in the man advantage for the Wolves. And they really haven't been able to generate any good chances thus far. High slot, Martin's lost it. Out at center ice, Breslin with it. Center circle, Marinucci. Marinucci, over the line right side. Chipped it into the right corner. Knighty gets there, far corner. Far corner, Marinucci steals. High slot, Martin. Shoots, blocked, rebound, Martin. Left circle, walks in, centers. Breslin, bats it behind the net. Now Marinucci swings it over to the far side. Martins, far point, settles it. Right corner, Marinucci. Far point, Codinia. Far side now, Marinucci, near point to Martin. High slot, Codinia, shoots, blocked, rebound. Out to center ice, Picard able to block that, but couldn't get to it fast enough. The Wolves, over the line, left side to Breslin. Breslin, left circle, looking around. Near point, Martin. Martin to the high slot, far point, Codinia. Far circle, Marinucci. Marinucci. To the top of the right circle, fakes. Right corner glove by Martins, right circle Marinucci. The Wolves along the perimeter, can't break the box and Cole slaps it out to the neutral zone and it rolls into the Wolves end. 40 seconds remains on the double minor to Bullock. And the Wolves stuck at four shots right now. Up the right side out at center ice, LaRouche. Long cross ice pass, Malte can't catch up. Nelson chipped it off the glass, gloved by Nardella in the center circle. Set it back to Matt Martin. He pivots in the high slot of his own zone. Goes cross ice to Nardella. To the center circle, Nardella over the line, high slot. Jammed it in the right corner, he'll chase after it. Gordon plays it up the far side. Hit a rut in the glass, and the Griffins couldn't get it out. Near point, Malte into the left circle. Malte centers, the Roosh! Wrapped out in front by Gordon, his best save of the game, and the Wolves denied a power play opportunity. Patterson trying to catch the Wolves in a change. Walks and shoots LeBlanc the save, and he holds on. We're going to have a penalty upcoming. The 11-19 remains in the first. We're scoreless. This is Chicago Wolves hockey. A power play by the Chicago Wolves, and two of the best chances have been by the, the Griffins, and especially Ed Patterson. He had a breakaway earlier, and here he has another breakaway, cutting the net. And once again, he, he goes to uh, he goes to the blocker side on Ray LeBlanc, and a big save by Ray LeBlanc. We have spoken earlier that it was a key for Ray LeBlanc to get uh, to get in the game early and make a big save early, and this was a, a huge save for Ray LeBlanc. Ed Patterson hasn't been a great offensive force this season. But the coaching staff has said he's done all the little things. Chicago and that's made it up for him. Well, his lack of score. Two minutes for too many men on the, ice. the Wolves Being get a bench minor for too many men. Pearson, Pearson serving. So the Wolves short handed for the second period. time. Baker right that's side at center ice. Three wide feet to Martin. He hammers it in. Gordon the stop. And the Wolves get Potman off the ice and Marinucci on. Now Baker will head off. President will head on. Right side at center ice. Metropolitan. Lost it. Near side the neutral zone, Richards pumped it in and Martin just golfed it down the length of the ice. 
Behind his net now the captain, Kerry Huffman, a 10-year NHL veteran. Far side at center ice, Nelson rips it in the far corner. Around comes over to the near side. The near point, Marinucci digs, and his work helped Knighty go cross ice with that pass out to the neutral zone. Out at center ice, scooped up by LaRouche. He zipped it off the glass. The linesman had to duck, and it winds up down the length of the ice. The Wolves short for another 55 seconds. Griffins tied for sixth in the power play at 18%. They've gone three for 14 coming in against the Wolves in the season series. A steal by LaRouche out at center ice, and the Wolves drive it down behind Gordon. Behind his net now, Todd Nelson. Up the right side to Cole, over the red line, over the blue line. Left it at the near point, Patterson. Try to go rink wide, the Wolves pick it off and crank it down. Gordon behind the net, forced up the far side to 90 because Malte was in deep. Now Malte grabs it at the high slot. Malte, one on three, chips it down into the left corner. He and LaRouche are a terror shorthanded. Center circle, Patterson. Backhands it ahead, Rukti over the line, left side to Cole. Shoots, blockered by LeBlanc over to the far corner. Far circle of the Wolves, bang it ahead, Pot Van. Able to get a piece of that one and get it out to the neutral zone, and the Wolves don't really allow much on that. Power play opportunity by Grand Rapids, and Pearson is out of the box. 9-10 remaining here in the opening period. We're scoreless, and the penalty killers dominating for both teams, Wendell. That's exactly. We had the two good chances by Ed Patterson, and an aggressive uh, uh, penalty kill by Chicago Wolves. And again, like you said, if with Maltez and Rogers on the ice, the other team, the opposition's power play, has to be very aware of when they're on the ice. They're gonna be aware when they're on the ice. And so now they're on the defensive even a little bit and takes away from their own power play. Draw will be in the near circle to Chicago end. We're still scoreless here. 11 minutes into the game. Far point held in by Batirshan, deflected out in front. But Tolaire shot over the crossbar. Near corner, Vial couldn't get it free from Bullock. Now Martin gets it, cranked it up the near side. Huffman ties up his guy, near point Tolaire. Near circle, Bullock. Shoots LeBlanc, pad save, rebound, LeBlanc again on Weaver. Far point, Batirshan. Shoots LeBlanc, will freeze, and he holds. 841 remains in the first, we're scoreless. This is Chicago Wolves Hockey. I love my job. My name is Kelly Walker. I work in a daycare center. Keeps me busy. The kids. In the Van Andel Arena, he's making some big saves. He's standing up, making the saves. Rebound come, he's in position for the next save. Some, some key saves here. He's made seven early uh, with 8.41 left in the first period. From the far circle in the Wolves end, Ray LeBlanc, the all-time active leading winner in the IHL right now with 218 wins in this league. Richards took a hit from Rogers in the near corner of his own zone. Cole cranks it down the length of the ice. This is going to be icing as Tilly comes back and touches, and that's the call. The Wolves have clinched a berth in the 98 Turner Cup playoffs. Ticket packages are available now for all 15 possible home games. Don't miss any of the action. Great seats are available in all price ranges, so call 1-800-THE-WOLVES. Draw on the left circle in the Griffins end. LaRouche will dig down. He had an unassisted goal on Thursday in his first game of the Wolves. His 24th of the season. He comes in 16th in the league in points with 68. That would rank second on the Wolves, by the way. Here's Richards wheeling to the center circle. Chipped it ahead, Nardella couldn't knock it down. He tugs at Patterson, and we're gonna have a penalty on Nardella. He tried to make a play at the blue line, and it's gonna cost him because Patterson got Ladies and gentlemen, your attention. Patterson's very, very aggressive uh, early going here on the, on the penalty kill, and now coming across the line. He went by Bob Nardella here, and Bob Nardella, instead of taking a chance and letting Patterson have another chance, he puts out a stick and has a, 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 tries to hook him, trying to slow him down, trying to slow him down enough. Did, not enough to make him fall, but enough to tug him and take him away from, the, from uh, getting the puck himself. And again, the referees are, uh, are told about obstruction to call it even, even tighter these days. Bob Nardella giving up a lot of size right there. And Griff, their mascot, perplexed that Patterson couldn't get a chance there, but the Wolves shorthanded here for the third time. We're scoreless with eight minutes remaining in the first. Behind his net, Huffman up the right side to Metropolitan. 
Over the line, right side of Picard into the right circle. Thought he had a step, and then Baker chopped it away from him. Back of the net, Metropolitan. Left circle, Huffman shoots the block to save. Rebound. Point four behind the net, Metropolitan. Far point now. Huffman, far side. A rink wide pass to the near point. Nelson rings it around. Behind the net, Picard couldn't hold it. Far side, Metropolitan. Left corner, Martin gets to it. Back of the net, Baker. Rolls it up the near side, held in Nelson near point. High slot, Huffman. Shoots the block to save, and he holds. Claude Boivin came by and took a wave at Ray LeBlanc, and now Boivin wants to have a word with one of the Wolves. Mark Potvin steps in. Claude Boivin, a big man, and there's still some yammering going on. With, the, with Picard on one side here, they're trying to feed the other side now because they know the Chicago Wolves are keen on Picard on, one, on the, on the right-hand side of the Griffiths power play. So now they're feeding it across and they're trying to work it from the left-hand side. Shot from the point, somebody going to the net, but again, Ray LeBlanc on top of his crease, looking solid and, and not letting out a rebound. LeBlanc has now faced nine shots and made nine saves. The Wolves able to win the face-off and Vial plastered it down the length of the ice. Ian Gordon leaves it behind the net for Kerry Huffman who played last year in Vegas. He had 24 points in 44 games. He had to spend some time in intensive care after injuring his spleen in a game in Phoenix. Coughed up in front of the Wolves net, and Dennis Vial fires it down the length of the ice, and then he got leveled afterwards by Jason Weaver. Along the near side in the Griffin zone, Huffman kicks it back in front of his net to Bullock. 37 seconds remaining in the penalty to Nardella. Bullock rips it to the left corner. LeBlanc blocks it behind the net. Over in the near circle, Picard walks in, shoots LeBlanc, kick save, rebound. LeBlanc able to freeze through traffic. Ray LeBlanc has not been known throughout his career as a guy who does well in traffic, but he's looked excellent thus far. The key to Ray LeBlanc is being on top of his crease here. Now Picard picks it off, off the boards, and Picard is a shooter. He goes to the net, he, the first thing he does, he's looking towards the net. Good shot by Picard, but even a better save by LeBlanc. Again, on top of his crease here, and Ray's keeping his concentration, and he, and he gets the puck again. He gets the puck in, in, in front of him here, and he keeps his concentration, stays up, sees that it's coming in front of him, and he covers it up. Wolves win the faceoff. Godinik rips it up the near side. Knighty held it in with a glove near point, throws it on the net, and LeBlanc will hold on to it. And Wendell, we've talked about it in the past. Watching Ray LeBlanc and how his body language is back in the net, you can tell how confident he is, and he looks very confident right now. Looks definitely looks very, very confident, and that's what we spoke before the game, that if he gets a couple big saves early and things goes way, way early, he's a very, very tough goalie to beat. Far corner, Boivin took a hit from Godinik. Far corner, now Bullock. Bullock bothered by Godinik. Back of the net, Cook rips it up the near side, held in near point, 90, far point, Richards shoots deflected wide by Boivin. I don't think that would have been on goal anyway. Bob Nardella out of the box. Back of the net, Tolaire. Tolaire, chopped down by Godinia. Up the far side now, LaRouche. He flips it back to the Grand Rapids line and the Wolves will change. Just under six minutes remaining in a scoreless first period. Center circle, LaRouche, weaves over the line left side. LaRouche to the high slot. Far point, Tilly just coming off to the bench, couldn't get to it, and we're gonna have a penalty as LaRouche was held up by the Griffins. This should go against Grand Rapids. Scott Zelkin making the call. Both LaRouche and the Griffins guy looking back to see who it's gonna be against. They're not sure who, who got the penalty here, because both are going for the puck here. They're both going for the puck, and they're both tugging at each other. Talaire was going after the puck, so was LaRouche here. They, they both kind of fall. Could have been holding a stick on Dallaire. <laughs> Once again, it's what the it's what the referee and sees himself, and, and he takes it from there. That's uh, I think one of the biggest complaints with the with the league right now. You're not a lot of times you're not sure what the ref's going to call. You don't know what kind of game he's going to call. And sometimes you know the players are as perplexed as the as the referees on what the, what's going on out there. And that's certainly the look that Steve Larouche has right now in the Chicago penalty box. He's the guy who heads off. And the Wolves go shorthanded for the fourth time. 5.47 remains in the first. We're scoreless between the Wolves and the Griffins and Grand Rapids, partly due to the power plays, leading in the shots 11 to six. Draw will be at the far dot just beyond the Griffins line. Martin's up front with Scott Pearson to start out on the kill with the dancing bear, Dennis Vial on the blue line with Tom Tilly. 
Grand Rapids wins the faceoff near Circle Nelson in the zone zone, now to the far corner. Huffman, back of the net. Nelson up the near side, Metropolitan coughed it up. Steve Martin just buzzing around. Behind his net now, Picard bothered by Pearson. Up the far side. And now it's fed back to Nelson and he gets it out to the neutral zone. Excellent work there by the Wolves. Left side over the line is Weaver. Drills it off the end boards over to the near corner, Metropolitan. Near corner, Picard up to the near side, Metropolitan. Near point now, Nelson shoots. Blocked out in front by Tilly's glove and the Wolves spring back. Center circle Tilly. He has a short-handed goal this year. Gets it to Martins and the Wolves will waste some time. Martins back to his own zone, far circle. And blasting it down the length is Matt Martin. Behind his net now Richards. The Wolves have killed off a minute of this Grand Rapids power play and they, ha they have not even allowed the Griffins to set up. Far side at center ice, Richards turns back into his own zone to the near point 90. Griffins having a problem with the Wolves' speed right now. Center circle, Richards took a tug from Marinucci. Bounces it behind LeBlanc. Ray leaves it there. Godinia tried to drill it around. Blocked by Ruckty. He centers to the far point. This will carry out. Matt Ruckty, not known for his hands, but rather his fists. And that pass there missed by a mile. The Wolves try and counter, but Marinucci waited too long and drew Breslin offside. 4-17 remains in the first. We're scoreless. And the Wolves have so many offensive players, Wendell, that can also kill penalties. What sort of a weapon is that? That's a, it's, it's a great feeling as a coach to, to know that you can put anybody out on the ice and they're gonna be an offensive threat. And it's a scary part for somebody from the, uh, for the, uh, the other team, the other team's coach, and they gotta go through key guys. And when they go through the lineup of the Chicago Wolves, there's a lot of key guys to underline in the dressing room before the game. Chris Marinucci, hot of late, had a hat trick on Tuesday. He had a five game point scoring streak ended on Thursday in Indy. Set five goals and nine points in his last six. Draw out at center ice, won by the Griffins. Turning behind his net now is Nelson. An IHL All Star in 92 93 with Cleveland. Up the left side out at center is Trebojevic. Bangs it in and around. Over to the near side. Wolves couldn't get it out near point. Nelson shoots. LeBlanc the save. He came out the challenge. He had Ed Patterson just to his right, but LeBlanc went through the traffic and cut off any attempt to redirect. He's shooting from the point now because the Chicago Wolves uh, penalty kill are, are being aggressive. And again, Patterson is, is another key player for, for the Griffiths. And, and here he is in front of the net. He had a couple chances earlier. Now he's in front of the net. Ray LeBlanc very smart to get out ahead of the player going to the net. And Ray LeBlanc once again covering up his rebounds. And that's, that's a nice sign to see out of Ray LeBlanc. Tron the near circle in the Wolves end. Tilly scoops it up, cuts behind the net. Rips it up the far side, Potvin makes his check, gets it out to the neutral zone and into the Griffin zone. And LaRouche is out of the box and the Wolves are a perfect four for four on the kill. Out at center ice near side, over the line right side now as Weaver back and LeBlanc the save, rebound, back of the net. Back of the net, Rogers. Try to chop it away from Bullock. Near corner, Weaver. Back of the net, now Bullock. Bullock cycles. The Wolves won't give up defensively. Near corner, LaRouche backhands it ahead. Near point to Lair. Tried to drill it down low, almost turned it over, and now does. Left side at center ice, Rogers over the red line. Over the blue line, near side. Looking, wink wide, Tilly shoots. Gordon the save. Haven't called his name for several minutes. Near side, Malte tried to center, blocked. Comes out to center ice. The Wolves always have a third guy high. It was LaRouche that time. Nardella drives it behind the net. The Wolves change. Just under three minutes remaining in a scoreless first period. Judd Serrat along with Wendell Young at the Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids. And we have a whistle. Wendell and I will bring you back in just a moment. We're scoreless, Wolves and Griffins. This is Chicago Wolves Hockey. Chicago sports fans are known across the country for their savvy. What's the primary source of that savvy? The savviest sports writing team in Chicago, the staff of the Chicago Sun-Times sports section. It's a team that writes with style. Week's Wolves action in our Rewind segment. And of course, first period highlights and stats, so stay with us. Steve LaRouche has generated a few opportunities for his line mates, Mark Rogers and Steve Malte, but right now it's a scoreless game. Behind the Grand Rapids net, Petirshan up the near side, Picard. Picard forced behind the net, Huffman. 
Up the far side now, Boivin has to spin and drives it back into the Wolves zone. LeBlanc leads it back and up for Cook. Very defensive oriented game from Grand Rapids. Coming up the middle is Cook. Up the right side out of center ice is Vial. Took the hit from Boivin and drove it in. The Griffins like to play the trap. Far point Vial. Hustled to keep it in. Right circle Vial. Centers. Driven out in front and c -Mac denied by Gordon and then it skips by Cook. He'll have to race. And he beats Metropolitan to the puck. Cook near point. Goes rink wide to the far point no, no, Tilly. No, 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 no. Center circle Baker. Got it to c -Mac. C -Mac Golf's a high backhand to the far corner. 90. Shovels up the far side. Pearson with the hit. The Wolves keep it in. High slot. C-Mac shoots. Blocked. Matirshan came up to kick that away. Here's Picard. Wheels ahead. Up the left side. Pearson bothering him. He wobbles one behind the net. Tilly with it. Tom Tilly slams it up the near side. 90 into pinch. The Wolves get it out. Pearson. Center circle now. Marinucci out of the line. Left side. Into the left circle. Center. Martins couldn't drive it on goal. He deflected that one. Far side now, Marinucci. Rolls it to the high slot slowly and it's picked off by Picard. Picard over the line left side. Knocked down by Tilly. Fans here wanted a penalty, it will not happen. 112 remains in the first, we're scoreless. Center circle, Marinucci over the line, high slot. High slot and out of the near point, Marinucci. Turns, looks around. Far circle, Godinia, shoots, blocks. Rebound in the slot, scooped up by Bullock. The Wolves make a change in the blue line. One minute remaining here in the first, Godinia. Right wing feed, Martins into the right circle. Try to get it back to Marinucci, and it's flipped up the far side and out to center ice. All of a sudden, the Wolves are starting to pour it on. They just haven't been able to generate a clean chance at Ian Gordon. Far side at center ice. Well, the Wolves almost guilty of too many men there. Marinucci sweeps onto the right corner. Half a minute remaining in the first. Far corner, LaRouche. Chipped it up the far side, Weaver. Weaver bounced it up the far wall and back into the Wolves zone. Martin with it, far circle. Left wing feet at center ice, Malte. Chips ahead, now Rogers near point, Malte. Near circle, LaRouche shoots Gordon, the save. Rebound is there, but Rogers couldn't get to it. His momentum heading the other way. Seven seconds left here. High slot, Cook, or Cole, pardon me. Drives it beyond LeBlanc. Far corner, Cole. Smothered against the wall by Godinik, and that'll do it for the opening 20 minutes of play. Wendell, as that period progressed, the Wolves started to gain control when the play was five on five, but they couldn't get to a second opportunity in the final minute against Ian Gordon, and we will end this period scoreless as both teams head into the locker room. Ray LeBlanc, an excellent performance in the opening 20 minutes of play, which we talked about during the open as being one of the keys. Checking our scoring summary from the first period, sponsored by Sears Craftsman, no goals scored. Shots on goal after 20 minutes in favor of the Griffins, 13 and a Stop by the Horizon box office or call Ticketmaster at 312-559-1212. Our next televised game is Saturday, March 28th, when the Wolves travel to Milwaukee for another important contest with the Admirals. Tune in at seven for Countdown to Wolves hockey game time is at 7.30. Chicago Wolves are exclusively on cable TV. Check with your local cable company for the channel in your community. Is he in the movie, Swindle? I think that's Neil Young. <laughs> no role to, not a role to be there, Judge. <laughs> Thanks for that follow-up. The Wolves working left to right here in the second period. Ray LeBlanc in goal to our left, Ian Gordon in goal to our right. We're scoreless as we begin. Back of the net, LeBlanc being obstructed and held up by Matt Ruckty. And the Wolves break out nonetheless. Center circle Nardella. Skips over the line left side. Drops high slot. Malte shoots. Rebound. Rogers. He fanned out in front with Gordon all to himself. Far circle now Malte. Left to the net Rogers. Rogers far circle. High slot Nardella. Shoots wide. Along the near side. LaRouche got it ahead and out of the near point. Tilly flipped it out in front. Deflected wide. Back of the net Malte. Centers. It's free in the slot. And now carrying it ahead is Cole, and out of danger. He drives it into the right corner. LeBlanc thought about playing it. Rugby back of the net, centers. Tilly got there to poke it away from his college teammate, Danton Cole. Those two played at Michigan State, not far from here. Rogers dives, couldn't get it out. Held in by Batirshin. Far point, Ramsey. 
Pumps it in behind the net. Center down in front. Malte steals. Wolves kick it up the far side. LaRouche couldn't get it out. Far point drilled out in front. Tilly steals. Can't kick it out. Far circle now Nardella. Takes his time and hammers it down the length of the ice. This is going to be icing as the Wolves will get the change. As Huffman touches, 18.34 remains in the second. We're scoreless and Mark Rogers almost found the back of Ian Gordon's net. I think if he had the chance again, he, he'd, he'd want it back. But on a rebound again, Chicago Wolves going to the net, being aggressive. Something we haven't seen in, in a lot of games before that, but they're being aggressive to go to the, go to the net. I think the Chicago Wolves now really have a mindset that they have a chance to really uh, create a lot of goals by going to the net here. They got a lot of goal scorers. Go to the net, gets the rebound, he had a chance. I think if he, if he had that chance again, he would have kind of stopped it a little bit and he had the wide open net. Behind his net, Kodinik shovels up the near side, Cimac couldn't tap it by Petirshan. Petirshan near point, now to the near side, Ramsey. Who's second in the league in majors, fourth in penalty minutes. He rolled it around the wall, and the Wolves slide one down the length of the ice. Petirshan behind his net, assigned here by the Kings organization. Only been here for a couple of weeks. Along the near side, Bullock shovels ahead and out to center ice. Wolves kick it back in. Batirshan, he was a healthy scratch last night. Batirshan left side at center ice. Flips it in the left corner and behind the net. Scooping it up is Matt Martin. He let some of the traffic go by in the form of Greg Bullock. Those two played together last year in St. John's. Here's Martin. Up the left side out at center ice. Baker got a piece of that one as it trickles behind the Griffin's net. 90 touches and we have icing. 1740 remains in the second. We're scoreless. Wendell, I was talking with Tom Tilly before the game, and what he mentioned is what the Wolves have to avoid is being pinned in their own zone for long periods of time. That's where the team gets into trouble. If they can make a couple of quick passes and get it out, that's what they need to do. The defense have to move the puck quick to the fours. The fours will be breaking. They know they have an offensive team. Earlier, uh, when Tilly was on the ice with Nardella, and there was a lot of uh, scrambling around in the one zone, Nardella got the puck very smartly, just drilled it down the ice for an icing. If Ray LeBlanc comes a puck for, for a whistle, they would be very happy with that whistle. It's the same thing if they drill it down. It, it's tough to get it in some players' heads. They just to drill it down, take the whistle, hey, we'll regroup, we'll win the faceoff, and we'll go back down against them. Just get the puck out of the zone and get it down and, 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 and take a breather and get back at it. Stop by Mickey Finn's Brewery, 412 North Milwaukee Avenue in Libertyville to meet some of your favorite Chicago Wolves defensemen and enjoy one of Chicagoland's best brew pubs. On Wednesday, March 25th, Matt Martin will sign autographs from 7 to 8 p.m. Then on Thursday, the 26th, meet Paul Cook also from 7 to 8. For more information, call 1-800-THE-WOLVES. They're doing some repairs on the ice. There is a chunk behind Ray LeBlanc's net that they were working on earlier. Apparently the Zamboni driver here accidentally shaved too low and there's a hole in there. The hole in the ice, I know they've been working on it. I showed up at the arena today around 3.30 and they had a lot of water on the ice. They were working at it quite a bit. Fired out in front, LeBlanc! It squeezes through him and Blavin able to open the scoring. LeBlanc made the initial save but he couldn't stop that second attempt. Claude Boivin did not play each of the last two years due to, a, due to a knee injury, but he has new life here in Grand Rapids. This is when you don't want to get scored on. Off a of face-off, puck went back to the point, shot to by Bacard on that. Two Grand Rapids players go to the net, rebound comes out, and one of them knocks it into the net. A tough situation where both players, two, two Grand Rapids players go to the net, both D have to pick, that, to pick at least the stick up. Near side at center ice, Metropod shovels it behind LeBlanc. LeBlanc had a problem behind the net, trying to flip it into the far corner. Far corner now, Metropod. Far point, puck didn't get to 90. Back of the net, Picard. Picard centers, Godinia. Godinia lost it, now in the slot, Picard being battled. Near circle, Metropod centers, and Picard tied up by Godinia. Far point, 90, shoots wide. Rebound up the near side and out to center ice Marinucci, out of the line right side. Stops near point. Centers, Breslin, around the net, Gordon is out. Rebound, Marinucci, shoots. Never got to the cage, far corner Martins. Martins holds on to the puck, possibly too long, and Trebojevic stripped him. Then behind the play, Martins and Trebojevic punch one another. 
Right circle, Metropole. Beam to the puck by Matt Martin. Far circle, Ruckty overskated. Far side. Picard stripped. Center circle, Martin. Speeds up the line, left side. A drop to Marinucci, high slot. Marinucci shoots, Gordon the save, rebound. Rebound, Marinucci couldn't fire it in. Gordon got over to the near post. Breslin had a swat at that as well. Near side, Cook throws it down deep. Near corner. Nelson chipped it up the glass and out to center ice. Back is Vial against Patterson. Near point, Patterson stops. Tried to center, Vial kicked that into the near corner. LeBlanc out of the net to play it. Here's Martins, around to check. Got around another as Cole tried to stand him up. Martins instructed to flip it deep. Anderson wants a change. Behind the Griffins net, the Wolves get to the puck. Digging forward is LaRouche. Malte knocked down. Let's go, let's go. Far corner. Malte being impeded. Play continues. Rogers trying to fish it out of there, as is LaRouche. It's free behind the net, Nelson. Near circle. Shifted up left wing and back into the Wolves zone. LeBlanc almost had it stripped by Cole. He can give you some scary moments when he comes out to play the puck. That is not LeBlanc's forte. One near side, Rogers. Center circle now, LaRouche. Cranked it in the right corner, back of the net, Gordon. Gordon flips it up the near side. Near point, Vial held it in. Out in front, Malte shoots, Gordon the save. Rebound, swatted out of the air. And back into the Wolf zone. Bob Nardella will cruise back in touch. This is icing. 1447 remains in the second. Griffins one, Wolves nothing. This is Chicago Wolves hockey. Chicago sports fans are known across the country for their savvy. What's the primary source of that savvy? Go out there and have a, have a good shift and kind of change the momentum, not give the team a, a complete momentum after let, allowing a goal. And exactly what happened with Marinucci, Breslin, and Martin, they had some good chances here. They had some great chances uh, uh, on Ian Gordon, some nice passing, some good shooting, and actually some good saves by Gordon. Ron, the near circle in the Griffins end. Baker in the near corner. Centers out in front, it comes, Pearson shoots wide! He's so strong, he pulled free from the check, but couldn't find the inside of the far post. Right side at center right, Tilly blasts it in the right corner, around it comes to the far side. Pearson tried to tap it down low, and we're gonna have a penalty. Is this going to the Wolves? It's gonna be holding. And it will go to the Wolves as Scott Pearson will head off. Well, Pearson did a great job of keeping that puck in. But Scott Zelkin found something he did illegal. I, I find Scott, when Scott Pearson's playing, he's a very, very aggressive player. He hits a lot, he goes after a lot of players, and he's a very much a competitor out there. So sometimes, uh, maybe the competitiveness gets the best of him sometimes, but I really think that uh, a lot of times that the referee is looking for the way he plays. He, he's, a, he's a hard worker, he goes after the play, but, uh, but again, uh, I think the refs have their eyes looking at uh, Scott Pearson. Well, the Wolves penalty killing has been dominant. Four for four in the first. Baker, far point steals. He had Martin cutting down the slot. He'll have to retreat as Grand Rapids gets control. Near circle of his own zone, Picard. Rick wide, out of the near circle. Richards taps ahead. The Wolves change their killers. Short shifts by the Wolves. Godinic cranked it ahead. That hit Breslin in the back of the leg. Marinucci shovels it in. Breslin deflects it. Far point, Boivin had it stripped by Marinucci. Near corner now, Richards. Gets around Breslin, but not Marinucci. Near side at center ice, Picard bumped, and he coughed up the puck. Marinucci's been a wrecking crew thus far on this penalty kill for the Wolves, and the Wolves drive it behind Gordon. Wolves kill off 50 seconds thus far on the minor to Pearson. Griffins, punch one off the glass behind LeBlanc. Far corner, Potvin. Couldn't get it ahead, far point Huffman. Far point now Picard, added in his feet, flips it over to the right circle. Metropolitan, far point Huffman, holds onto it. The Wolves aggressively on the perimeter and they steal, chop one back into the Griffin zone. Short shifts again, Don Anderson wants a new crew out there. Walking up the middle in his own zone, Richards. He had the game winner in the power play last night against Cleveland, a 2-1 victory here at home. Behind the net, Weaver. Far corner, fed up to the far point, 90, shoots, blocked by Breslin up high. Near corner, Cook gets to the puck ahead of Bullock. Held in near point, Nelson. Near side now, Weaver. 
And Tilly slapped it away from him and back into the Griffin zone. 13 seconds remaining in the minor to Pearson. Wolves have not allowed a shot on goal as of yet with this kill. Here's Malte over the line high slot. Took a bump from Nelson. Malte had a shorthanded goal on Thursday in Indianapolis, his third of the season. And the Wolves with an outstanding kill. Pearson is out of the box. And the Wolves, five for five, shorthanded. Behind his net now, Nelson. Nelson. Trying to get some room from 90 out in front, LaRouche. Won't move, held in near point by Malte into the right circle. Shoots, Gordon the save, rebound. Rogers roofed it over the crossbar. Far point now, Martin hemmed it in. High slot, LaRouche tracks it down. LaRouche shoots, blocked, rebound. Rogers banging for it, golfed by the Griffins. Back into the Wolves zone. Martin will touch up for icing. And we get the call, 11.49 remains in the second. Griffins one, Wolves nothing. This is Chicago Wolves hockey. Jiffy Lube knows there are a lot of places that try to get your oil change business with coupons, but they don't do everything we do, like windows, vacuuming, free refills, as well as professional oil changes. At Jiffy Lube, we want your business, so we'll auto those coupons up to $5 off, just to show you how great Jiffy Lube service can be. So bring your competitive coupons to Jiffy Lube. Now there's no reason to go anywhere else. Jiffy Lube, Chicago land and Northwest Indiana's favorite oil change. Now in most Sears Auto Centers. Swings to the near point, Tilly. Shoots deflected, he scores! A power play goal, we're tied at one. Fans, everyone who attends a Wolves home game can score a 7-Eleven power play. When the Wolves score a power play goal, you simply take your ticket stub from the game to a participating 7-Eleven within 48 hours and receive a free 7-Eleven deli sandwich. Once again, Maltez, the Maltez line, LaRouche and Rogers have getting a lot of chances, a lot of offensive chances. Maltez gets a good shot off after blocking the puck at the line. Rogers had an open net at a bad angle, and he put it up over the net. And once again, he's in the same spot he was when he went to the net before and had the same type of chance. He's getting the chances, they'll eventually go in, and that's the key to, to a goal scorer. If they keep getting the chances, you know eventually they're going to be going in. When you don't get the chances, when you start worrying. Around the near circle the Griffins then. Griffins win the faceoff behind an extra Boyevich. Got a pick from Picard, and we're going to get a penalty. Picard's got to go. Ian Gordon skates to the bench. Why, I have no idea, but there was a pick set down low. And Picard is complaining, but here it is. A major, a major pick. Trying to, trying to hold off a player to give their defenseman uh, a chance to go up, and Picard right in front of the referee, and most of the time, you don't want him to take a penalty in that situation, but again, with the referees, they're gonna call it, and that one was a very blatant one on Picard. Bob McNamara's team will go short-handed for the first time in the second period. They had an outstanding kill in the first period, a double minor assessed to Greg Bullock. For the Wolves, a chance to even things at one. Claude Boivin has the lone goal as 11th from Picard and Metropolitan this period at 225. Dallaire wins the draw, and the Griffins 90 slaps it down the length of the ice. Tilly and Nardella, they work the points. C-Mac, Martins, and Pearson up front right now for the Wolves as the puck skips over the glass into the crowd, and they will have a face-off. This is the... 64th time in 78 games at Van Orlando Arena that they have sold out. Just an outstanding crowd here, and they have really come to support this team, Wendell. They definitely have. With the sellouts they have here, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, arena. And actually, if they uh, they made it to a point where they can make it even bigger if they want. Far side, now to the far corner. Nardella stops, blew a tire, back of the net. He gets up. C Mac gives it to him. Left of the net, Martins, working forward against Richards. Puck still free, now comes out in front and dribbled down the length of the ice by 90. The Wolves play it ahead quickly. Tilly at his own blue line. Center circle, over the line, left side, now to Martins. Martins left circle. Martins left corner. Far circle, c -Mac. High slot, now to Tilly. Top far circle, c -Mac. Fakes. Left corner, Martins. Far side, c -Mac. 
Pearson camped out front, high slot Tilly. Shoots deflected, Gordon the save, he juggled, and then Pearson pulled down out in front, and he wants a piece of 90 right now. They drop the gloves in the near circle, Pearson and 90. Pearson a couple of right hands. Now 90 tried to get an uppercut. They're still battling, Scott Pearson was awfully strong. 90 tried to tackle him, that's not gonna happen. They're at close quarters, Pearson trying to get a hand free. 90 throwing rights, can't hit. Pearson tying him up, 90 still throwing rights. Now Pearson a right to the air. 90 still in close quarters with him. He's not giving up. 90 missed with a shot. Pearson trying to get that right hand free. 90 trying to tie him up. 90 with an uppercut that missed. Pearson still trying to get the hands free as 90 ties him up. Talking to Scott Pearson before the game, he said as the game progresses and if he's not able to score, he just gets more and more frustrated. But right there, it was a move by 90 that ignited him. That's exactly. But Scott Pearson, he's an aggressive player, and, he's, and he gets frustrated easy, as you said. But he's a player that, that, that goes to the net all the time. What happened on that play, it, it came out to the point. Tom Tilly very smartly threw it to the net. Guys are standing in front of the net. When you get a shot from the point, you want a, want a chance to maybe screen the goalie and maybe get in, get in there for a chance at, at the at the rebound. And, and uh, Scott Pearson took exception to what happened in front of the net with, with, with the defenseman coming after him. He, he, being aggressive again, he was aggressive uh, quite a few games now. I think the key is with, uh, with with this time of the season, everybody's role has, has been uh, magnified a little more. You're kind of told what you have to do. You've got to be aggressive. And, and Scott Pearson's a smart enough player. He's been around long enough. He knows if he's not scoring, he's got to contribute by being very aggressive. Not necessarily fighting, but being aggressive, hitting, and, and playing tough on the boards. Draw will be in the right circle. The Griffin's in. Apparently 90 and Pearson will just get coincidental majors for fighting. Pearson leads the Wolves now with 209 penalty minutes. Actually, make it 211. The Wolves keep the puck in near side. Malte jams it along the boards. LaRouche sweeps one behind the net. Gordon advances it up the far side. Cole looks around, couldn't get it out. Held in far point, Tilly. Shoots deflected. Far side now, LaRouche. Wolves in the power play, another 38 seconds. Far corner now, LaRouche. High slot, Nardella. Right circle, Malte shoots, Gordon the save. He looked behind him. He moved over fast enough to make that stop on Malte, and then the Griffins clear. 23 seconds remaining in the man advantage for the Wolves. Tilly, center circle feed Malte over the line high slot. Malte to the right circle, LaRouche. Centers, Gordon deflects that over to the far point. Who will keep it in? Neither c -Mac nor Nardella. Far side of the checkered line, Nardella. Five seconds remaining in the power play for the Wolves. Nardella, left wing over the line to C-Mac. C-Mac far side, C-Mac left of the net. C-Mac walks it out in front. Oh, and the puck was loose. And then C-Mac got leveled, and I think we're gonna have another penalty on the Griffins as Alexander C-Mac continues to fly for this team one in the last few games. Alexander C-Mac has really stepped up lately, coming up with some big, big goals at key times, crucial times. He's had a lot of uh, game-winning goals in the last month or so. He's uh, he's done a very, very uh, good job for, for, the, for the Wolves in that aspect. Uh, uh, creating something, going to the net. He's, he's had uh, three goals and four assists in the last six games. He's finally contributing in the way uh, that, the, that the coaching staff wanted to on the offensive side. He's being a little bit more aggressive, going to the net. As you see in the play, he goes to the net, he creates something, and that's what the Wolves are doing. They're going to the net, and they're causing these penalties. And it takes their captain and best defenseman off the ice and Kerry Huffman. Marinucci won the draw, but he's put the defense on his attempt to backhand it up high. Matt Martin, far circle of his own zone. Set it ahead, got intercepted to Lair. Back into his own zone for Richards. They'll take off some time. Trubojevic, left wing feed. Hit Godinik in the back out at center ice. And now Bullock dumps it into his own zone. Right corner, Trubojevic heads back. Trubojevic bothered by Marinucci, coughed it up. Near point, Godinik. Far circle, Martin. Centers, oh, and Baker just missed stuffing it inside the near post. Right side at center ice, Tolaire wheels ahead over the line, right side into the right circle, it dropped to Richards, backhand blocked. High slot, Trebojevic. Tried to feed it right at the net, and going down to block that is Godinia. Right side at center ice is Baker. Baker wheels in the center circle, over the line, left side, into the left circle, Baker, a drop to the far point, Martin. High slot, Godinia, far point, Martin. Far circle, c -Mac centers. Near side, Marinucci tracks back. Marinucci 
Along the near side, Baker near corner. Baker centers, Martin shoots wide. Near circle, Marinucci. Near point, Godinia. Right on the net, Baker shoots. Gordon, a great stop. Rebound, Baker shoots. Oh, he tried to bank it in off Gordon, and Gordon able to make the pad save. Jamie Baker's done that a couple of times this year. Some great puck movement by the Chicago Wolves. Power play, moving the puck around. Grand Rapids cannot keep taking penalties and not be uh, expect to pay for them. So eventually, the Wolves are gonna break through here. Some good passing, some good shooting by the defenseman. A nice pass. It's very smart play by Baker here. Gordon's trying to scramble to get back in the net. And a lot of times, the goalies will come back. You hit him on the, on the back side of the pad or the back side of the pants, and it will go in the net. Very smart play by Baker. And at one time, you, sit, you call that a lucky goal, but it's a play by a lot of the forwards of these days. Baker's been hot of late, 41 points in 44 games overall. High slot, Tilly shoots, blocked, rebound. Tilly couldn't sweep it down low. Patterson carries it ahead out to center ice. Picard one-on-one -on -one, up in the line, high slot against Nardella. Near circle, Picard. Picard feeds it back to his own line. The Wolves in the power play another 30 seconds as Nelson delivers it behind LeBlanc. Picard there to pester the Wolves and Tilly just runs right by him. Left side over the line is Malte, chugging. Far circle, Rogers. High slot, Tilly. Centers, Malte. Too deep, near circle, Malte. Backs it up. High slot, Nardella. Shoots. They score! Bob Nardella keyed that. His wrist shot found Steve LaRouche's tape, and he goes shelf. A power play goal. We're tied at one. Great movement again, and like I just said earlier, that they're gonna pay for it once in a, you know, once the Chicago Wolves get on and going here, moving the puck. They've had too many chances and too much going on. Nice pass by Maltz out to the, out to the point. Nardella looks, smart play by defenseman looking up, and it's the same type of goal that Bob Nardella set up in Indianapolis the other night for, for Rogers. This time it's for LaRouche. Nice play by Bob Nardella just looking to see where players are and what a great, great deflection as, as Ian Gordon tried to step uh, slide across and LaRouche put it upstairs. Well, that was pretty and for LaRouche, he has two goals now in two games with the Wolves and it's his 25th of the season and the Wolves are back even at one. Here's Potsy over the line right side. Shoots, scored in the glove save and he holds. Seven and a half remains here in the second. We're tied at one. This is Chicago Wolves hockey. When it comes to the best names and tools, there's only one name to remember, Sears. The only place you'll find more of the hardest working name brands, including Craftsman, America's favorite. And only once a year, for three days only, they're all on sale. It's your opportunity to build your ultimate workshop. The ultimate workshop sale at Sears and Sears Hardware Stores. Stop by a Wolf camera and video location and enter the Chicago Wolves Fuji Film Sweepstakes. Stock up on select Fuji products and get a two for two Wolves ticket voucher. Then bring your camera and Fuji Film to photo night April 4th and take pictures of your favorite Wolves players on the ice after the game. Steve LaRouche quickly becoming a favorite for the Wolves. Goals in each of his last two. And he ties it at one here in the second period. Far side in the Griffin zone. Huffman took a bump from Breslin. The Wolves' speed generating problems here in the second period. The Wolves have taken command in the shots category. They have only permitted two by the Griffins this period. Meanwhile, they have notched eight. Potman drills it in. Gordon makes the stick save out in front on that bouncer. Behind the net, Huffman feeds it up the near side. Boivin, who has the lone Grand Rapids tally, slaps it into the Wolves' zone. Near circle, Martin feeds up the middle, Breslin. Breslin, center circle, Martins with steam over the line, left side, Martins left circle. Bodied off the puck by Nelson. The Wolves couldn't keep it in. Boivin chips it over the line, high slot to Picard. Poke checked away by LeBlanc. Far corner now, Picard. Back of the net now, Metropolitan. A lot of complaining going on right now. Back of the net, Picard wrestling Marinucci. Boivin comes in to help out. 
How could that be anything but a pick? Now out at center ice is C-Max. Steams over the line, far side into the far circle. Shoots Gordon the save on that shot. And then C-Max centered it out in front. What presence? Near corner now Baker. Back of the net Baker. Baker to the far circle. Far point Vial. His right circle feed picked off. Marinucci went into the slot. Now Teller kicked it over the line. He got pulled down, no call. Baker flips it up the glass far side and back to the Griffins line. 5.47 left in the second. We're tied at one. Griffins drive one to the far post. LeBlanc plays it ahead up the far side, out to center ice. Malte swept it into the Griffins end. <coughs> Behind the net now, Ruslan Batirshin. The young Russian defenseman. Looks around, the Wolves have given the Griffins problems with their forecheck and Batirshin just fires it off the glass and out. It's the safest play. Nardella, left corner, lost it. Arouche helps him out, near circle, Vial. Left wing feed Nardella, spun around by Patterson. The Wolves passing has really improved as the game has worn on. Kevin Shevelnaff, the Wolves general manager, complaining about it in the early stages of the first period. But as the game has progressed, the Wolves have gotten into the flow. Right corner, Malte. Couldn't keep it in, and the Griffins kick it back into the Wolves zone. Tom Tilly. Eighth among IHL defensemen with 47 points. Rink wide in Ardella. Out to center ice over the red line. Drilled it in. Knocked down by Petirshin's glove. Over the line. Far side is Patterson into the right circle. Centers. LeBlanc came out and denied that. High slot Nelson. Shoots LeBlanc a chest save and he holds on. 428 left in the second. One apiece. This is Chicago Wolves hockey. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. But if you listen to the Chicago Wolves on WCBR 92.7 FM, a thousand words can paint quite a picture. Now Pozo behind his own net, 49 seconds left. Pozo, left side, center ice. Young to the bench, Pozo over the line, high slot. Back pass, Malte, shoots, he scores! WCBR 92.7 FM, radio home of Chicago Wolves hockey. They ask in this voice, they ask in that voice. They whisper in your ear. Try as they might, no one's getting in your bed. No couches, no coffee tables, no sharp edge bookcases. On moving day, you'll do the lifting, not the hauling. So you park it around the corner, concealing more payload capacity than a Ford Ranger. And then you tell your friends you took a cab, Chevy S10 pickup. Look, but well, please don't touch. See your local Chevy dealers and test drive an S10 pickup today. Coming up during our second intermission, we'll talk live with Mark Rogers, the other recent Wolves acquisition. Also, we'll examine the shootout and hear from the players, coaches, and you, the fans. Plus highlights and stats, so stay with us between periods. Mark Rogers has had two outstanding chances against Ian Gordon, but hasn't been able to convert. Mark Rogers with a goal and an assist on Thursday in Indianapolis. Drop fire circle in the Wolves zone, Tilly. Snaps one up the near side and out the center ice. Shots on goal right now in favor of the Wolves. 19-17, the Wolves trailed after the first. Left side over the line is Nardella. With some speed at the high slot, sets a pick. Potman shoots. Gordon to the near corner. Breslin, back of the net now. Martins. Martin gets a pick from Breslin. Spinning. Martin still working in the near corner. Near circle, Martins. Centers, Potman. Far circle, Potman. Centers again, blocked. And wheeling ahead is Rukti. The center circle, he flips it into the far corner. Back of the net is Tilly. Tilly couldn't get it out. It's out in front. Patterson, the block forced it off his stick. Patterson then shoots from the side of the net and it was blocked. Ray LeBlanc continues to sparkle. A race for the puck. Breslin over the line left side. Breslin left corner. Ridden against the boards and down by Batirshin. A clean hit. Far side at center ice. Picard into the right circle. Picard, high slot. Shoots. LeBlanc the chest save and he holds down. He gave no ground as the Wolves came back defensively, and Picard looked like he got shaken up at the end of that play. Once again, Picard with his patience and his, uh, and his experience, he held the puck, held the puck, let everybody go to the net, and then he cuts across. He gets in a great scoring position right in the middle between the hash marks, between the circles, and Ray LeBlanc again on top of his crease, being aggressive, and once again, and once again, Ray LeBlanc standing out, standing out, moving across, got his eye on the puck the whole way, and doesn't allow a rebound after that. 
Breslin getting locked up with Ruslan Batirshin after the play, holding on to a stick to deny him an opportunity to get involved in the play, although Batirshin didn't look like he was hustling up the ice offensively. Ray LeBlanc has just been magnificent tonight. Before he stopped Picard, he denied Ed Patterson on a clean opportunity in front. Patterson just took too much time, and LeBlanc just poked out that stick. Ray being aggressive, that's uh, that's the key to Ray's game. If he's aggressive, he's on the top of his crease, he's, he's a much, much better goalie. Again, he got his confidence early in the game, and now he has all the confidence in the world right now. He's aggressive on a, in a game that, he, that he's uh, lacking some confidence. He would sit back on the net, and Patterson probably would have got a good shot off. He would have had the time to get the good shot off. But no, LeBlanc came out and was aggressive and forced Patterson to the corner. Around the near circle of Wolves end. Picard left corner. Picard, we have a whistle. What for? Hand pass. <laughs> I was looking around to see what that was. Scotty Zelkin has issued, I won't say quite a few minors, but his share of minors in the game. Every time, there's a, every time there's a whistle, you're wondering what's going on here. You, you get a little worried because you don't know what, uh, what what kind of penalties are going to be called by the referee. And, uh, and especially, you know, they have a lot of supervisors here at the game, and they're kind of forced to make some calls that they don't really want to make themselves. Some of them admit it in private that they don't want to make those kind of calls, but they have to because their supervisors are in the, in the, uh, in the stands. Duncan also referees National Hockey League games, working in the eye, trying to develop. Near side at center ice, Metropolitan. Teams up in the line, right side to Picard. Picard to the high slot. Picard, a drop, high slot, Trevoy, but shoots and scores! That one got deflected out in front. Just too much time, and there's not much the goaltender can do there. Not, not much you can do. When, when Picard has the puck, he has some time, he has time, he, has a, he holds it, holds it. Very smart play, drops it, shot from the point, and what's going on? It's the same thing that the Wolves are doing. Now the Grand Griffins are doing. They're going to the net, they're going with, with some aggressiveness, going to the net, and you're going to get awarded. When you go to the net like this, you're going to get, get rewarded for it, and a great, great deflection. Some good plays. By, by, the, by the Grand Rapids team, holding the puck by the card, just keep, keeping it, being patient, nice drop pass, and the defenseman saw that guys are going to the net, and either you put the puck on the net, good chance you're gonna get a rebound, a deflection, or your shot's gonna go directly in. So smart play by the defenseman to get, be aggressive, get the puck on the net, and a great play by the Grand, Grand Rapids Griffins to go to the net and, and create something for themselves. How damaging is that with that goal coming with just under three minutes remaining, Wendell? You really never want to get scored against, and you always say the first and five are important, then you break it down to the, first, uh, the, the one minute mark of each period. It, it, it's something that the Wolves have to try to be aggressive and try to get back before they go back into the dressing room. I believe Boivin got that one. The Wolves trailing once again, LeBlanc out of the net. Ruckney got hit behind the play by Bial as the Wolves break back. LaRouche, right side at center ice, Malte flips it in. Rogers chases, far corner, Nelson bangs it up the far side, Cook pinches. LaRouche back defensively to deny Cole a two-on-one opportunity. Rucky Cole and Patterson, the checking line right now against the Wolves' top line. Steve Malte couldn't get it out, right circle, Cole. Cole holds on, left circle, Rucky shoots, deflected out in front, here comes LaRouche. Center circle to Malte, over the red line. Right side of the line is Rogers. near point now, Malte carries. Right circle, Bial couldn't keep it in, and it's hecked out to the neutral zone. Nardella dangling at his own line, flipped it ahead. Bulls couldn't drive it in. Now center circle, Nelson. Took a bump from Rogers. Dumps it in the right corner of the Wolves zone, and Nardella banked it ahead out to center ice, Rogers. Over the line, high slot is Martins. Racing behind the net, Gordon plays it over to the near side. Now Weaver with it, leads it ahead, couldn't get it out. Near circle, Martins, centers, going down a block, that is Petirshin, a great defensive play. Marinucci saw the steal and burst to the front. One and a half remains here in the second period. The Wolves trailing 2-1, center circle, Marinucci, over the line, high slot. Wings it into the right corner, looking around is Knighty. Knighty along the near side, flipped it ahead and got it out, Tilly. Got it away from Bullock. Near side at center ice turning is Breslin over the line right side. Breslin right circle. Centers, Gordon the save, rebound out in front. And we're gonna have a penalty as once again, Steve Martin's speed drawing an infraction and this time from Batirshin and it couldn't have come at a better time. It's a key, it's a key time in the, in the period 
and in the game that if the Wolves can get something going here on the on the power play and make it a tie game before they go in for the, the second period intermission, again, being aggressive, nice pass across, being aggressive, going to the net. And when you go to the net, you're either going to get the puck and a chance on, on a pass, a deflection or a shot, or you're going to, most of the time, you're going to, you're going to, draw a penalty to yourself and put your team on the power play here. It's a great aggressive work and a lot of the penalties that the, the Grand Rapids team has, has been taking all night is, is because and a result of the aggressiveness of the Chicago Wolves going to the net, creating something for themselves and a lot of times when you don't get a penalty called a, a, against the other team, it's because you're not aggressive yourself. But a lot of these penalties are to, are to the credit of, uh, of the Chicago Wolves. Nice pass on the backhand from Marinucci. It, and, and with Marinucci, he's been kind of playing in between with Podfan and not getting as much dice time as, he, as he's used to. And it's a tough situation for players to do that. Marinucci comes out. He had a chance as soon as he came off the bench. He had a chance in the slot. Now he makes a nice pass across, very nice pass across to, to Steve Martin going to the net. Steve Martin is having a great offensive season, his best during his professional career. Martins will grab a seat. Wolves in the power play. They have their lone goal and the man advantage. Belongs to Steve LaRouche. Left side over the line now is Rogers. Far corner, he chases. Far point, now Tilly. Near point, Nardella. Right circle, now to the right corner, Malte. Centers, Rogers golfed it over the crossbar. Far side now LaRouche, under a minute to play here in the second. Back of the net, Huffman. Rolled it around to the near side, Nardella pinches. Wolves hold it in. Right circle, Malte spins his shot down low. He fanned on and comes out to center ice. Tilly got away from Picard who dove at him. Picard will head off. Center circle, Tilly rips it in the left corner. Gordon stops it behind the net. Rings it around to the near side. Tolaire turns away from LaRouche and golfs it back into the Wolves zone. LeBlanc's gonna have to come out and play this. LeBlanc plays it up the far side. Tilly, 15 seconds remaining in the second. Tilly, left wing, over the line now for Baker. High slot, Nardella, right of the net, deflected! And Malte, his shot had Gordon, hit him in the right pad, and Nardella's drive denied by Gordon as well as we have the end of the second period. Well, the Wolves pressuring Ian Gordon, and he came up with some nifty saves along with his counterpart, Ray LeBlanc. And at the end of 40 minutes, the Griffins have opened a 2-1 lead over the Chicago Wolves. This is a familiar position for the Wolves, and they have been successful in the past. Bob Nardella ripping one here. Steve Malte tried to deflect it between his legs, but Gordon read that, came over and smothered it, and then Malte got hammered to the deck. Nardella. Bob Nardella looking up, every time he gets the puck at the point, he's looking up, seeing whether he should shoot or pass, and he gives kind of a fake shot, half pass, nice play, he's looking at the net, looking, and then guys are going to the net for the deflection. It was a nice, uh, again, once a, a nice deflection, and a shot right at the end here by Nardella. He saw nobody was open for a deflection, so he takes a shot himself on goal. Checking our second period scoring summary, sponsored by Sears Craftsman, Claude Boivin. Open the scoring is 11th of the season from Picard and Metropolitan at 225, LaRouche. Tallied on the power play to even things is 25th, 12-14 from Nardella and Malte, but Guavin, a deflection out in front from Trebojevic and Picard, his 12th at 17.02, and that closed out the scoring. Shots on goal after 40 minutes in favor of the Wolves, 23-20. to Stay with us when we return. Wendell and I will have Mark Rogers as our second intermission guest. This is Chicago Wolves Hockey. Continues my return with Tug McGraw 
on Classic Sports. And here's McBride at bat, two for three. Swing, ground ball, base hit. In the right field, Espinosa will stop at second base. That's the 18th hit for Philadelphia. Now here's Bo at bat. He doubled in the first inning. He singled in the third. He singled in the fourth. Men on first and second. The pitch popped up. It could be trouble. Over Buckner's head, the wind carries it in play. It drops in front of Bale, bounces away from him, goes to the wall. Espinosa will score as he comes around with Buckner's throw, hits past foot, but Hernandez is there. It's a double for Boa. 18 to 9 as Espinosa scores. Rose batting right hand. Runners on second and third. Swing ground ball to the left of the shortstop. The Aces bobbles it, picks it up, Ken drops it again. Rose is safe on the air by the Jesus. And McBride scores. Fly ball, center field, Martin is there. Boa tagging up at third. Here comes Rose to third to tag by Anaveras is missed. As Rose gets up and claps his hands because he made a fadeaway slide and Anaveras dove for him but missed the tag. Here's the tag up after this line drive to Martin in center field. Martin concedes Boa. That's Boa scoring. And here's the play at third. As Anaveras dives and just misses him and that umpire was right over the play. So credit to third base umpire being right over the play so he could see whether Rose was tagged or not. Sacrifice fly by Unser. Scores Boa with a 20th run. Curve ball, swing, fly ball, deep left field. Kingman going back on the warning track. Reaches up and makes the catch. Here comes Rose in the score. Four run score. Philadelphia, they like get the computer out. 21, Cubs 9. But the bottom line is it's such a good move. You know, we've asked uh, like Wendell Young and he says he can, you know, his move is so good, but if you cheat to it, he'll just make, he'll deke you to his backhand. So, I mean, you have to play him honest and, th and that's the thing, it's such a good move, but he has two options. He can go to his backhand and if you go with it, then he comes back to his forehand. So it's, it's really a good move. You know, I think, uh, personally, I think I just try and, you know, go down and make sure I get a good shot off. I think a lot of times the ice is real bad, and, uh, you, know, it, it, you know, I'm not one to make too many moves because uh, a lot of times guys will go down there and make a move and, and really not get much on it or, or not get a good shot off. Depends on what I see in the goaltender. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll just skate down the ice and not know what I'm going to do, and uh, I try to make him, make him make the first move, and, and I decide after that what I'm going to do. You know, you got to go with your strengths, and a couple of guys have their moves that they like to do usually and you know I tend to do what I like to do most often that I the rare time I get the call but uh, uh, you know you just do what you feel comfortable doing usually I try and watch I watch the uh, you know if I don't go first or second I'll watch the other goalies tendencies and just see see what he's been doing and if there's any weak spots and I mean I don't really have one one move like uh, you know Guzmanov does or something something that really stands out so uh, I'll just try and see what his weakness is and then go from there. Stats reading wise, uh, you know, the advantage is always to the goalie. Uh, I think it's uh, between 60 and 70 percent of the time the goalie stopped the shots. And I think the goalie's got the advantage. I like to think it. I've got to think it. <laughs> I've got to believe that we have the advantage. Everyone we asked agreed that the advantage in a shootout goes to the goaltenders. But even with a slight advantage and knowing some of the tendencies of the shooters, there's still a lot of pressure on the goalies not to let one through. I just find that the guys are so quick and uh, of course you're facing the top five shooters on the other team. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough, uh, tough spot to throw a goalie into. I'd rather 
be patient and uh, try to uh, react to the move the shooter is uh, putting on instead of uh, trying to uh, guess uh, and gamble on what the shooter will be doing. You know, depending on where the puck is, usually if the puck is in front of him when, when he's coming, usually 90% of the time he's going to be uh, trying to deke. Uh, if the puck is on the side, usually it means he's going to shoot and he's going to try to shoot it. One of the arguments for a shootout is that it's exciting for the fans. So we asked you. I think it's so exciting. It's like, I don't know, like you get all this action at the end because you don't know who's going to win. Depends on which end you're on. If you're, if you're on the losing end, then you hate it. But if you're on the winning end, you love it. I really don't like it. I think going into an extra, extra period, it'd be better for the fans. I love it. I think it's a ton better than the overtime. For it or against it, both sides can be happy. Shootouts happen during the regular season, but come playoff time, the teams play until the very end. The Wolves will start out this period on the power play. There's 42 seconds remaining on a Ruslan Batirshin minor. This is the Wolves' fifth. Center circle, Malte, over the line, high slot. They're defeated into the right circle, but got intercepted and driven down into the Wolves' zone. Tilly behind his net. 23 seconds remaining in the power play. Tilly, left wing at the red line, Nardella. Rips it in the left corner. Back of the net, Gordon stops it. Shoots it up the far side, held in by Tilly. Right corner now, LaRouche. Far corner, Malte. Far side, Malte. Malte, right circle. Right corner, LaRouche. Backhands it behind the net. Rogers kicks it in the near corner, then he's tied up. And the Griffins are back at full strength. Petirshan is out of the box. Nardella throws it to the far point in his own zone for Tilly. Skates ahead, cross ice. Now Rogers over the line, left side. Rogers to the near circle, stops, centers. Malte had it deflected away. And Godinia couldn't keep it in at the high slot, it was close. 18.53 remains in regulation. The Wolves are trailing the Griffins, 2-1. The Chicago Wolves telecast may not be reproduced or retransmitted without the express written consent of the Chicago Wolves and the IHL. No unauthorized use is permitted. Play to the point here. Defenseman on a change coming late from the bench. Almost keeps it in at the point. Good. Godiniak almost kept it in at the point, but with the defenseman switching, they get to the point a little too late. Behind the net, Gordon, instructed to play it. He just left it there. Trebojevic being bothered, couldn't get it out. Now Breslin being held up by Boivin, but nothing issued. Boivin, who has both Grand Rapids goals, fires it out to the neutral zone, Picard. Rammed against the wall by Martin, and the Wolves break back. Or try to, at least. Martin's pass to Martin's behind him. Near side at center is here. Stevie Martin's over the red line, over the blue line, into the left circle, into the slot. Gordon poked it away. Far side at center is Goudinia. Backhands to the far wall, Boivin. Fights off the check from Martins. And he dumps it into the right corner. Martin looking around, flips it up left wing. Scotty Zelkin had to get out of the way. The Wolves will counter with some changes. Played about two minutes here in the third. The Wolves trailing 2-1. Right side at center ice, Tiller rips it in. LeBlanc steers it over to the far corner, over the glass, and into the crowd. And we get a whistle. One in the first 40 minutes, the Wolves had some difficulty breaking the trap, and I'm sure as the game wears on, Grand Rapids will try and tighten that down even closer. But when, when the trap is happening, they're trying to force uh, the way it works in the neutral zone, and inside, just inside the, the offensive zone, you try to force the play to one side. And the way to break the trap, you go D to D, have an opening at, the, at center ice, and move the puck up from there, and that's the way they all have to switch, and it's a tough situation. Near corner, Bullock. Right circle, Weaver shoots, and that one's a souvenir. Greg Bullock trying to trigger the chance there for Jason Weaver, a rookie. Played at Canadian college hockey. At Acadia, Canadian college hockey just not as big. Canadian, uh, my, my brother actually coaches there, and, uh, and there's been some uh, good players come out of there, especially in the International Hockey League. Steve Martin's using his speed, going, uh, making a nice move on the, on the Grand Rapids defenseman, especially Kerry Huffman, which is a very reliable defenseman, made a nice move, but the puck was just moving a little too fast for him to catch it up, and Ian Gordon Cole just had shot it away. Near point 90, far point, but Tiershin fires it behind the net, right of the net, Bullock centers. 
Bounces over to the near corner. Cook jams him against the wall. Near circle to Lair. Around a check. The L bothering him in the far corner. He just toppled him. The L back of the net. Cook. Cook. Left side. Marinucci rips it out to the neutral zone. Over the line. Right side. Now is Baker into the right circle. Stops. Oh, he couldn't get around but Tiersch and Gordon plays it up the far side. The Al read it, kept it in. Now Marinucci, oh, he just overskated it. That puck wouldn't roll for him. Comes out to center ice in the center circle. Weaver plows one in the right corner. Bob McNamara wants a change. Behind his net, Cook up the near side of the Al. The Al, cross ice, Marinucci. Right wing feed, C-Mac up on the line right side. Stops. C-Mac at the far point, his feet up high. Too fast for Nardella to get there and onside. Far point Tilly. Tilly in the far circle. Leads it ahead and Cole picked it off. The Wolves offense has been frustrated here tonight. Left side over the line, Malte into the near circle. LaRouche centers, Rogers kicks it wide. Buck rolled by Rogers over to the near side and Patterson swings it back into the Wolves zone. This is gonna be icing as Tilly cruises back to touch. And that's the call. 16-15 remains in regulation. The Griffins to the Wolves one. This is Chicago Wolves hockey. Chicago sports fans are known across the country for their savvy. What's the primary source of that savvy? The savviest sports writing team in Chicago, the staff of the Chicago Sun-Times sports section. It's a team that writes with style and substance. A team that doesn't just cover, but uncovers, too. A team that's concise, precise, and feisty. Come on now, get savvy. Get hold of the Sun-Times today. I love my job. My name is Kelly Walker. I work in a daycare center. Keeps me busy. The kids are very active, moving and jiggling and boogieing all day long. I think their energy is contagious. It's a long day. It can be hard. Even when- Every Wolves home game, the Quest Sports Bar at the Romano is the official pre and post game meeting place for Wolves fans. One lucky fan getting that jersey. Well, not lucky, he had to pay for it in, the, in an auction recently. The Wolves generating money for multiple sclerosis. Puck fired down the length of the ice. Bob Nardella heads back behind the net, holds onto it. Gets away from Cole. Nardella out to center ice, a lead ahead. Rogers tapped it in, Nelson clears it up the near side and out. Cole, two on two, Matt Ruckty. Right corner, Tilly looking around. Rucky lines him up, and he drilled him. Matt Rucky's a big guy. Up the right side, Rogers into the center circle. Now back ends up the line, LaRouche into the right circle. Drills it off the end boards over to the near side, Malte. Shoots Gordon to save. Rebound to the near corner. Richards got it ahead. Patterson, three on two. Patterson up the line, right side to Cole. Into the high slot, twisting. Far point, shovels it. Down in front, the Wolves block that. Now Trebojevic near point. Trebojevic couldn't get it down deep into the corner. LaRue shovels it ahead and out to center ice. Malte over the line, left side, one on two. Malte high slot. Malte, right wing feed, missed Gordini. And it's rattled back into the neutral zone. Over the line, far side now is Cole. Cole in the high slot, shoots LeBlanc the save and he holds with a dangerous guy out in front. Ray LeBlanc has protected those rebounds quite a bit. Ray has done a very, very good job of getting the rebounds. The one rebound play that got away was the result of a goal in the second period, which wasn't Ray's fault, but he's done a great job of letting the puck come into him and let the puck drop in front of him and cover it up. A pitch by our forward, and Chicago Bulls forward at center ice made this play all together. I believe it was Martin stepped up, he thought that both D were back, the other D was over a little bit, and created that play. The Wolves leading the league and come from behind wins in the second period. Left side over the line, Pearson. High slot, Pearson. Far point, Pearson. Shovels a backhand behind the net. Breslin couldn't swat it out front. Along the near side. Here's Huffman up right wing. The red line, Metropolitan. Wobbles one in the far corner. Godinia looking around, wings it around the boards, and Breslin. Chipped it up left wing and back to the near point in the Grand Rapids end. Knight pivots, throws it up the near side, Boivin. Claude Boivin, former first round pick of the Flyers in 88. Near side, center ice, Martin gets to it. Couldn't get it ahead over the line, left side is Boivin. Centers, Martin ties up his guy. We're gonna have a penalty as he pulled down Picard. And then Martin and LeBlanc went crashing into the far post. 
14-15 remains in regulation. The Wolves in a difficult predicament here. It was a nice pass by, by the Grand River. Griffin's player going to the net, Picard going to the net, creating something for himself there, and again, as we've talked about uh, earlier in the game, about the Chicago Wolves creating penalties for the power players themselves and causing penalties, and that's exactly what Picard did. You've got to take a penalty in that situation, but somebody has a scoring opportunity, has a scoring chance, if that pass never get, uh, gets across, you have to take a chance at, at taking that penalty, make sure he doesn't get that goal, you'll take your chances at, at killing, the, uh, killing the penalty. John Anderson's team has been outstanding on the kill. Five for five in the first 40 minutes. And they have also generated some offensive chances. It is not out of the realm of possibility to tie it up here with a shorthanded goal. Far side to Lair. To Lair. Far point backs up. Far corner down to the top far circle. To Lair. Left of the net. Metropolitan couldn't center. The Wolves couldn't get it out, however. Behind that bullet has the puck roll by him. Vial ranked it ahead and couldn't get it out. Now does. Baker dangling out in the neutral zone. Richards will play it back to Gordon. Gordon rolls it into the near corner. The Wolves have killed off 30 seconds thus far. Richards has it picked off by Marinucci, who's tied for the team lead with three shorties. He, LaRouche, and Malte have three on the penalty kill this year. Center circle, Marinucci bothering one of the Griffins players, and the Wolves get the Griffins to cough it up. Bullock rips it in the right corner. LeBlanc slows it, comes up the far side, Marinucci with it, and hacked it ahead on right wing back to the Griffins zone. John Anderson will change, Bob McNamara will counter. One minute remaining in the minor to Mark. Right side at center ice, Bullock twists to the center circle, cross ice over the line now is Huffman. Shoots LeBlanc the save, and he puts it down for a moment, and we get a whistle. He held on to it just enough to get the whistle from Scott Zelkin. Ray LeBlanc has now faced 22 shots. Turned to side 20, he's been outstanding. Very good, and this is not a high percentage shot by the, by the Griffiths, especially on the power play here. They, they, the shot, it comes from just inside the point by Huffman. Ray LeBlanc over the top of his crease, really far out, especially when a player's that far out. And you know your gear standing up as a goalie, you get that much more aggressive, and you know you can stand out that much farther out of your crease. 49 seconds remains in the kill for the Wolves. They tie him in the far circle. Cole gets it to the far point. Huffman banked it down to the left half boards for Picard. He doesn't normally work this side. He usually works the near side. Picard, far corner. Back of the net. Patterson couldn't rumble out in front. Cook steers it back in up the far side. LaRouche rolls it ahead, and he got pulled down. No call. And John Anderson giving Scott Zelkin some lip from 85 feet away. Griffin's cleared into the Wolves zone. This should be icing as Godinia touches, and it is. Steve LaRouche was impeded from getting to that puck, and Scott Zelkin let it go. Once again, you wonder what's going on with the referee, and you, you, you don't realize what, what's going on. He, he got, that's interference. He, he was going after the puck. That's clearly interference against the boards. It's in front of the referee because the referee is standing right there. Now, there's a certain time in the, in the third period that you, you know the ref a lot of times are not going to call it. He just finished calling a penalty. The Wolves are, are shorthanded. He should have called that play there because it, it did impede uh, LaRouche from getting after the puck and maybe having a chance to go down the ice on a scoring opportunity. Can't ref the score or the game time. Grand Rapids wins the faceoff. They have only 14 seconds remaining in this power play, which hasn't generated much. Center circle, Richard blasts it in. Around it comes to the near side. Cole in the near corner, battling for it. Back of the net, Tilly slams it around and by Patterson, and the Wolves are back at full strength. Out at center ice, Martin. A lead over the line, high slot to Rogers. Near circle, stops. Rink wide, Tilly. Far circle, Vial, high slot, C-Max centers. Oh, Martin just chipped it wide. Did Gordon get a piece of that? Far side in the Griffin zone. Richards. Bangs it up the far side back in the Wolves zone. Vial cruises back. No icing here. Here comes Dennis Vial. Right wing feet over the line. C-Mac into the high slot. C-Mac near circle. Baker rink wide. They score! Alexander Godinyak rips it by Gordon to tie to two. Some great, great passing. The shift before this, the, the line that was out there before, had some great puck movement, moved the puck around really well. 
Matt Martin just missed a nice play to the back, back side of Ian Gordon. Again, some nice plays here. Some holding up the puck, putting it across. Nice shot across, a lot on it. Back foot, ball very hard through the shot and into the net. Nice, nice puck movement, great puck movement in the last minute, minute and a half by the Chicago Wolves. The Wolves are down one nothing and two one. They have rallied to tie it. And we still have it, 11 and a half minutes remaining in regulation. Center circle, Baker. Wheels over the line right side. Baker slaps it behind the net. Behind the net. Knighty gets a pick. Marinucci strips the puck. Far corner, Marinucci. Far point, Godinia took a chance, keeps it in. Right corner now, Baker. Centers, oh, C-Mac had it swatted away before it got there over at the near post. The Wolves steal, Baker, over the line, high slot. His cross-ice pass picked off. And back in the neutral zone, the Wolves control. Slammed in by Godinik, and the Wolves change. Right-sided center ice, Tolaire golfs it into the Wolves zone. And we're gonna have a whistle for offside. 10.43 remains in regulation, two apiece. This is Chicago Wolves hockey. Very pleased by the Chicago Wolves movement of the puck and some aggressive play. He really enjoys and, and, he, and he preaches coming over the line with the puck and pulling up with the puck and setting up inside the blue line and look and see what's happening. Catching players coming late, getting guys going to the net and getting your chances going to the net in which the guys have been really doing the last five minutes here. Cook swept it over the line and apparently the Wolves offside. Oh, Cook's initial attempt. Hit Malte in the back, so we have a stop. Alexander Godinik tallying his fourth of the season from Baker and Cmac at 8:21, and the Wolves even up at two in their best period of the three. The Wolves have outscored their opponents by 26 in the third period. That's the best in the International Hockey League. Gordon over at the far post freezes the puck with Malte in the vicinity, and we have a stop. Mark Rogers and Steve LaRouche banging over at the half wall to try and free that, and they did. They, they get in the corner. Rogers is going to be the aggressor on, on this line. He's going to be in the corner banging. LaRouche is not afraid to get in the corners himself, but if Rogers can get there, get the puck, he knows he, he's got two very, very competent players on his line to put the puck in the net. They're going to try to get the puck off the boards and try to feed the front of the net. If he can make a direct pass, great. If not, put the puck on the net for a rebound. Shane Knighty behind the net. Knighty. Carries up the middle, feeds up the far side. Patterson tries to get around his own guy and does. Huffman and golfs it back into the Wolves zone. LeBlanc steers that bouncer behind the net to the dancing bear, Dennis Vial. Vial drills it up the far side and out to center ice. Puck tried to get swatted back in by the Griffins. Here's Rogers, kicks it over the line, high slot. Bats it over to the right circle, Vial. Vial centers. Nobody there out in front, and Vial's going to have to chug back into position. Center circle, Cole no, swats gone, it in. Behind the net now, Vial. Vial gets away from Rucky. Vial just blasts it up the glass far side and out. Nelson, near circle of his own zone. The first player ever signed in this franchise's history. This is only their second year in the International Hockey League. Center circle, Metropolitan over the line high slot. Had it batted away, Martins with it. Stevie Martins, far corner, bothered by Metropolit. Reverses it up the far side, Cook. Cook, bothered by Metropolit. Far side, Picard. Picard had it swatted away, comes into the slot. Oh, and he got dragged down. It is Oscar time, and there might have been some dramatics involved, but the Wolves go shorthanded again here with nine minutes remaining. S some aggressive play by, by the Grand, Ra Grand Rapids team, going to the boards. Picard comes up with the puck, he cuts across, he had a chance, and, and again, another opportunity where Picard is drawing penalties by being aggressive. He's going to the net, he, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a scoring threat, and you always know as a player on the ice, you know who the scoring threats are. You gotta try to take them down, especially you don't wanna let Picard walk to the front of the net and have a one-on-one -on -one confrontation with Ray LeBlanc. Steve Martins is so short, our camera guy couldn't get him back there in the, uh, in the penalty box. But nevertheless, it is Little Marty in the box, and the Wolves go shorthanded again. Podman banks it back in. Richards, bothered, near side Podman. Flipped it down behind the net. Baker buzzing. Wolves have been all over the Griffins when they've had the power play. Right side at center ice, Metropolitan, over the line high slot. 
High slot now, Picard. Left of the net, walking out in front. Lip lock, what a stop! He robbed Wavana the hat trick! Once again, Picard was a part of the play. He, somebody's got to be, you got a key on this player out here. He, he's a major part of the play. Nice pass. Metropolitan going to the net on the backhand. Wavan had a chance on the backhand going to the net here. Aggressiveness. And you asked for a couple big saves of the goalie a game, and there was one major one by Ray LeBlanc. Going to the net here, he went for the Pocheck, took away the short side of the net. Tom Tilly muscles it down the length of the ice. A little short, another minute 28. Steve Martin's in the box. Metropolitan to his own line, Richards. With a head of steam over the line, far side. Gets around Tilly into the far circle center. Bial picked it off, couldn't get it out. Marinucci rams it up the near side and out to center ice. Nelson hustles back for the puck. Beat Breslin to it, coughed up. Vial will drop one back into the Grand Rapids zone. Near side at center ice, Boivin, who has two tonight. Picard couldn't drive it in, Boivin in front of the Wolves bench, far side at center ice, now to Picard over the line. Vial throws it back into the neutral zone and the Wolves will change, 50 seconds remaining in the kill. Behind his net now, 90. Grand Rapids completing a change, so 90 had to hesitate. Here's Knighty, walks up the middle, angles right at the red line, blasts it in the right corner, around it comes to the far side. And at the far point, Huffman couldn't hold it in. Gary Huffman, bothered far point in his own zone by Baker. Rink wide now to Knighty. Knighty rips it in the right corner. LeBlanc couldn't stop it, back of the net, far point now Huffman. Shoots, LeBlanc stick save. Rebound back of the net, near corner Patterson. Near corner now Bullock. Bullock near circle, had it swept away near point Knighty. Shoots, LeBlanc the save and the rebound through Cole's legs. That's a good bounce for the Wolves goaltender right there and Baker will clear it down the length. That'll do it for the penalty. Stevie Martins will head out of the box right now. And Martins grabs the puck, flips ahead. Maltic, the lead over the line, high slot. Puck checked away from LaRouche. Martins jammed it ahead, gloved by Trebojevic. Now LaRouche ties up his guy. Grand Rapids changing. Are we going to have too many men? The linesman, I believe, blew that whistle as we have a stop in play. 6.53 remains in regulation, two apiece. Back in a moment. This is Chicago Wolves hockey. He's not playing a regular shift with the exception of a, a few shifts, uh, even strength in the second period. Now, he sits on the bench for a long time, and the only time he's, he's seeing ice time is on the first uh, unit of the penalty kill. So you're sitting there, and you're getting stiff sitting on the bench, and then you got to come out and try to kill a penalty against the top players on the other team. You're sitting there. They're trying to come with speed, and you're, you go out and try to kill a penalty. He's got to be concentrating the whole time on the bench because you never know what a penalty is going to be against your team, and he has to come out. And he's done a great job. The penalty kill overall has done a great job, but he's he's been one of the top uh, you know killers. He's been the first unit to go out. If, if the uh, offensive players, uh, say Maltez or uh, LaRouche, have already been on the ice, they get a rest. Poffin kills out the first part of the penalty with, with his partner, sometimes with Marinucci. Got to give him credit also in the same aspect that, that Poffin is. And out comes LaRouche and Maltez to kill some of the penalty. You got Baker, you got guys that are playing a regular shift, but Poffin gives them that, that breathing room to come out and kill the back end of the, end of the penalty. And you got to give guys that sit the bench for a long time. It's probably the toughest part. If you're playing all the time, it's easy to just jump over the board. You know you're coming back on in 45 seconds or whatever. But in a situation with Poffin and, and with Marinucci also, penalty killing or Marinucci on the power play, it's a tough situation sitting on the bench and then coming over and basically uh, being cold. Well, Grand Rapids will get whistled for too many men. And the Wolves to the power play to try and take their first lead of the night. We are tied at two with just under seven minutes remaining. Here's Tilly, center circle. Over the line, high slot. Couldn't connect with Rogers. He was close there. Near corner, Rogers digs for it. LaRouche comes in, couldn't strip it, and it's whistled down the length of the ice. Grand Rapids is not strong on the penalty kill. They came in 16th in the league. Left side at center ice, Malte over the red line, over the blue line, left side. Skips around 90s check. Flipped it in the left corner. Patterson couldn't find it. Near corner, Malte does. Near point now, Nardella wheels to the high slot. Nardella. Looking around, cross ice pass, Rogers grabs it, almost intercepted. Rogers holds onto it near side. Rogers being bothered now, Richards forced him. Near corner, couldn't get it out. High slot, Tilly, right of the net, multi shot, denied by Gordon. Near point, diving down as Nardella took a chance. He kept it in for a moment, but it was freed out to the neutral zone. 
LaRouche over the line, high slot. Couldn't hold it on his blade. It comes out to the neutral zone. Malte, near side at center ice, Nardella. Rips it in the left corner. Gordon stops it behind the net. Couldn't play it out, right circle, Malte out in front, LaRouche. Near circle, LaRouche, near point, Nardella. High slot, Tilly, near point, Nardella. Near circle, Rogers. Rogers near point, looking around. Near corner, LaRouche. High slot, Nardella. Backs it up, near point, Tilly. The Wolves showing patience, Tilly. Left of the net, LaRouche centers. Far circle it goes, Nardella. Down low, almost lost it to Tolaire. Now Tolaire got it by him, and here comes Bullock, steaming over the line, far side, into the far circle. Shoots, slip, block the save, and he holds. 5.07 left in the third, two apiece, and the Griffins get a shorthanded chance. Bullock right, going with some speed. He tried to open up and see what was out there. He went to the juggle of the net. Good pursuit by, by Tom Tilly to kind of force Bullock off to the side. Way the ball go out on, on being aggressive again. Well, you know it's a one-on-one. -on -one. You can be that much more aggressive as a goalie. But again, Tilly taking away the angle, uh, taking away the, the chance going there. Again, you can't be giving up shorthanded uh, chances. Nice play here, nice puck movement again, right across the crease, Steve Mo in through Steve Moltes' skates. He, he's usually there for, for on a stick. If it's on a stick, it's usually in the net. Went through his skates, he'd like to have that chance back again. Grand Rapids is no longer short-handed. Here's C-Max center circle to Baker, over the line high slot. Baker couldn't get it down low. Rukti, the designated sitter, out of the box. 4.45 remains in regulation, two apiece. Center circle, C-Max, left wing feed Marinucci, tapped it in. Left corner now Richards, bothered by Marinucci and Cimac. It rolls to the opposite corner. Guavin makes the check on Godinia. Far point held in by Baker. Shoots deflected just wide. Near side, not of the near corner. Nelson throws it off the glass and back into the wolf zone. This should be icing. Is it going to roll far enough? Yep. No, it's not. Godinia threw it up the near side. He thought there was going to be icing. Martin, right wing feed Marinucci. Busting for it, Trebojevic. Carries it back into his own zone. Sets it up for Huffman. Huffman carries up the right side over the red line and pumps it in. LeBlanc makes that save out in front. Near circle. Here's Vial. Cross ice to Martins. Martins holds onto it. High slot. Martin. Left wing feet off the wall and it caroms in. Behind the net, Huffman. The Wolves make some changes in the blue line. Behind the net, Huffman. 345 remains in regulation. The Wolves with the lone goal this period to tie it at two. Alexander Godinik is fourth from Baker and Seaman. Near corner, Malte jammed it ahead, couldn't get it out. Well, pardon me, that was Vial. Breslin right side at center ice. Backhand center circle, Martins over the line, high slot. Kicked away from both he and Pearson. Look out here, over the line, high slot is Weaver. Dropped in the slot, Vial picked it off. Right wing feet for Martins, too far. The Wolves get their change, Gordon. Banked it up the near side, out to center ice. Rogers with it, turns away from some of the traffic. Swats it over the line, into the near circle, Rogers centers. Gordon, what a stop of the far post, he denies Volte. 3.05 remains in the third, two apiece. This is Chicago Wolves hockey. Grand Rapids, the Wolves with a third period goal to tie it up at two, we have 3.05 remaining. And there is a significant problem, Wendell, at the high slot in the Griffin zone major, major chunk out of the ice. And, they, and we had spoke about earlier, behind the net, there were some problems with, with the ice this afternoon. The, uh, the, the, the guy that drives the Zamboni cut it a little too close. And, and that shows you how fine that ice is on, on, on the cement floor that's, uh, that's under the ice. They were working on it uh, here in the afternoon. We saw so much water. They probably had an inch of water down trying to, trying to build up the ice a little bit. And this is a, 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 a major, major, major uh, hole in the ice. You can see the referee is picking out, and it's, it's a, one of the biggest holes I've seen on the ice. I don't know how they're going to repair this. In practice, we throw, they'd probably put a pile on uh, out there in practice if you don't skate through it. But, uh, you know, they're going to try to put a lot of water on it. They might put a fire extinguisher uh, uh, to try to freeze that up as quick as they can, especially with only 3.05 left in the, left in the game. 
you don't want a, a situation held up with this. This might be to the advantage of the Chicago Wolves in the aspect that they've got more firepower. They're resting their, their key guys, especially coming off a, a shift for, for Maltez, LaRouche, and Rogers line, giving them a chance to, to rest, and then they're going to come out and be aggressive. The only uh, really offensive uh, you know, uh, guys they have going right now would be Bovin Bo and Picard for the Grand Rapids team, but there's a lot more on the on the Wolves side. So a, a mistake like this in the ice, uh, something wrong here, it's definitely, definitely uh, to, the, to the advantage of the Chicago Wolves. They're getting rested, and, and then they're, uh, you know, they're going to come out with uh, everything fine. Let me ask you, though, if we remain this way after 60 minutes and we head into the shootout and that patch is there, who does it favor then? That's, that's a good point. You'd have to come in at a different angle uh, than coming right down through center with that. I don't know the, uh, I don't know if the referee uh, has in his jurisdiction to, to make a call if the or ice is that bad that he, uh, you can have the shootout going in, uh, into one end. Ray and uh, Ray LeBlanc and Inia Gordon taking, uh, taking turns at the opposite end of the end of the rink, taking chances on the, on the, in the shootout. That's a major, major hole in there. And every time somebody's got to skate through that, that's going to be chipped up because you can't fix that that quick. Well, let me ask you, what options does Scott Zuck and the referee here have if it's an unplayable area? They're going to do everything in their in their ability to, to play this. If, if it was a uh, in the first period and that hole was too big and it couldn't be repaired, they would uh, you know they, they might reschedule or uh, send the guys off for uh, for a half an hour and try to try to get it going, take a break in within the game. But only 3:05 left in the game. They're going to they'll stop the game every uh, for every uh, every whistle to try to uh, try to repair that to make it through this 3:05. I know the, the referee is hoping the play stays down in the Chicago Wolves end, <laughs> so no, nobody skates through that, but uh, it, it's a situation where uh, with such little time left, they're going to try to try to play it. They have to, to play this. It would be uh, ridiculous not to do it that way. Well, just before this stop and play, Ian Gordon with some incredible stops of his own. So, uh, great, some, it's great puck movement again by the, by the Chicago Wolves, some really good puck movement. Rogers on his backhand made a nice pass across, being aggressive at center ice. He created his own opportunity here by being aggressive. Puck went off a shin pad. He chased it with, with good speed, and him with his vision of the ice, he looks up, draws players to him, and on a very, very nice backhand pass across. Not many players can make a backhand uh, pass across like that to Steve Moltis. Steve Moltis had a chance to jam it in here, but again, Ian Gordon showing why he was an All-Star this year and why he did so well in the All-Star game, especially the skills competition, coming across and making a great save with his pad to the far post. That's a tough move because you've got to respect his goal. You've got to respect Rogers cutting to the net. He, he might cut to the net, but he also, Gordon had the mindset to know that Steve Maltes was on the backside going and he pushed across, and that's the key to most goalies that are, that are very good these days is, is being able to get that lateral movement going from one side of the net to the other side, and he was up to the, uh, up to the test. Ian Gordon watching the repairs that are taking place at the high slot. The crew from the Van Andel Arena on hand to try and get that rectified. They have a fire extinguisher out of there with some snow in a bucket to try and get it to freeze. <laughs> or pardon me, it's a sprayer. Not an extinguisher. Sprayer. That's uh, it, it, it's gonna. It's every time somebody skates through that because it's still so soft. It's just basically snow. And uh, you know, uh, here's another uh, scenario. What happens if uh, some of your best players next shift skate through that and they uh, lose their edge, hit the cement under there? You got to send the you get players got to get a skate done. Here you get take one of your best players out of the out of the lineup. Have to go get his uh, new edges put on a skate because if a player skates through that and hits the cement, they're not going to be able to skate the next shift because they don't have no edges for skating. I wonder if Scott Zelkin right now. Is telling the guy to make the same hole at the high slot in the wolf zone to just even things out. This could be home ice advantage, Judd. This, uh, <laughs> this is one thing going on here. Well, there's something wrong just with that end of the ice. We talked about it earlier that they had an overflow of water there to try and get it to work. Well, I don't know really what they rectified. You could still see a hole at the high slot. It's visible from all the way at the top of the rafters. Maybe as a as a forward, I don't know as a goalie. I think that would interfere with my sight line. You're seeing uh, white white ice all the way in, and then at that point, somebody would put to take a shot from that area. That would be another uh, scenario. There's a lot of scenarios with, uh, especially where where it is. If it's behind the net or in the corner, it's a little different uh, scene. But what, where it's at, where there's a lot of a lot of flow going through the going through that area. A lot of guys would be skating through it. Now they're pulling the nets off the pegs. I'm wondering if they're going to try and resurface this here, Wendell. Definitely, they're pulling the Zamboni area right now. They're probably going to make one 
I don't know if they're making a full sweep of the ice, but the ice is going to be wet. They're going to. I don't understand what they're doing here. I, I really don't. I know the franchise has only uh, only been here for two years, but I, I don't know about uh, about what they're doing here. Maybe they're not that experienced. I think they would be experienced, but uh, they must be going to do the whole ice service. And now the ice service is going to be very wet which is again to the disadvantage of, of the Chicago Wolves. They're, they're a better passing team and you don't want the ice wet out there. So the Zamboni is on to try and rectify the problem here. And remember, there's a certain amount of time that it takes for the ice to set. And if memory serves, it's about eight minutes. Yeah, so they, they don't want to hold the game up that long. Uh, to kind of do it the once uh, a light wet through the middle, this is... Uh, <laughs> this is, this is uh, something strange for, for me, Judd. Johnny Anderson earlier had players over on the bench gathered around almost uh, like, like it was a timeout. They had them over in the corner doing some stuff, talking, going over some plays because they know they've got three minutes and if they get the face off in the end and they get a chance, they're going to they're gonna be aggressive. More offensive players on the Chicago Wolves and, and the Grand Rapids team. Johnny Anderson setting up plays. I know he, he's telling them to be aggressive. Go to the net. You're going to get your chances. I wish they have been doing tonight. Well, the Zamboni just came out and came up the middle to do that one chunk of ice, and everybody is still looking at the piece that is busted in the high slot in the Griffin zone. And I'm being told in my headset that it's called a hot water seal, and they're going to try and get it to work. And both teams trying to stay loose right now here at Van Andel Arena. We are tied up at two with 3.05 remaining in regulation. And now Scott Zelkin over the end boards to talk to the Zamboni driver once again. And there's gonna be a little bit of a delay here. Joining Swindle and I up here in the broadcast booth is Wolves general manager, Kevin Sheveldayoff. First, Kevin, with the situation, with the ice like this, what are the referee's options? Well, you know, I think there's uh, a couple of things that he could possibly do, and I guess what he's kind of chosen here is try to make the best of it. Um, it's a, um, a pretty serious place to have something like that happen, and, and obviously um, both teams are going to try and make the best of it and move on. Now, uh, I really don't know what the... the, the problems or what you can do is in case they ever have to call a game at this point in time. But it looks like they're going to try and play, and I think that's a smart move. All right, thanks, Chevy. I appreciate you jumping in. And we thought we were going to have a longer delay, and so we were going to chat for quite a while. But again, thanks for jumping in. Right off the draw, LaRouche drive denied by Gordon. And we have a stop and play. Three minutes remains in regulation. We are tied up at two. Steve LaRouche, a power play goal. Alexander Godiniak is fourth. Boivin with two for Grand Rapids. A nice, nice play off the faceoff by, by uh, LaRouche, right off going through the skates of the, of the centerman of, of Grand Rapids and getting a good shot on goal. And again, Steve Maltez going to the net for the rebound. They, they, they play off each other so well. One's getting a shot, the other ones are going to the net. Puck kissed off the glass near side by the Griffins and out to center ice. Center circle Nardella rips it in along the near side. Cole spun around by Malte. Held in near side by Rogers. Rogers flipped it into the near corner. Got away from LaRouche. Cole bounced it over Patterson's head, but got it out to center ice. And Patterson drives it behind LeBlanc. LeBlanc leaves it at the end boards for Tilly. Fires it off the glass, couldn't get it out. Oh, and then Rogers got rammed by Rukti and out at center ice. LaRouche got knocked down by Trebojevic. LaRouche looking around for a penalty, and nothing will be issued by Zelkin. 2.16 remains in regulation. We are tied up at two. And apparently that hot seal just has not taken. It's just not working. Ian Gordon's back over it, looking around at it. Somebody skated through it and almost fell going through there, because it's basically nothing. You, everybody would lose an edge, and you're going to fall going through there. And now Claude Boivin calls over the linesman and the referee. And this just will not work. They throw a water bottle off the Grand Rapids bench to the high slot once again. There is just a hole down to the concrete here at the Van Andel Arena in the high slot of the Griffin zone. Every time somebody skates to that, it's only going to get worse and worse. It, it's so 
uh, chippy around that area. Anybody skates near it, it's anybody's going to skate through it, and another chip's going to come out. It's going to get bigger and bigger as, as the last two minutes and 16 seconds uh, go on. Again, Judd, you made a, a comment on the shootout. They might have to go one end on the on the shootout here because that's a major, major disadvantage. Uh, and basically, it shouldn't be to the disadvantage of uh, the visiting team because it's a home team's uh, fault of their arena not being uh, uh, up to the capabilities of, uh, of the ice surface. They're still trying to do some repairs. I'm curious off the last faceoff where, where LaRouche went right through the, the centerman on the draw, went through the centerman's legs and went to the net. I, I, I'd be curious if John Anderson had told him to do that. Nobody had really tried it the whole game. You usually see it throughout the game. Somebody tries to jump jump by the centerman on the faceoff and get an offensive chance. And uh, Johnny Anderson, Coach Johnny Anderson, could have uh, very well have told LaRouche to try that and look for Maltez going to the back door or, or Steve Maltez going to the net in, in, in either aspect. And it was a, it was a great play. We're on the far circle of the Wolf Zone. Metropolitan will lean in against Martins. Martins gets kicked out of there. Martins still trying to plead his case with the linesman. Reslin will lean in. The advantage here is that he is a center as well, and he wins the faceoff. Kodinik back of the net. Up the near side, a feed for Pearson, and it comes back into the Griffin zone. Gordon plays it over to the far side. Picard forced from the puck by Breslin. Now Trebojevic bounced it ahead, couldn't get it out. Held in far point by Godinik, and we're going to have a stop for an offside. offside. Apparently, gonna, they're going to claim that that puck went over the blue line. With 158 remaining in regulation in the Wolves, because of this man, Alexander Godinik, in the hunt for two points. Alexander Gunyak, a nice play on the goal. And in that aspect, he kept the puck in with his hand, and he wanted to touch the puck. If he touched the puck, pushed the puck ahead with his hand, and he touched it himself before Martin, the play would have kept going. But Martin touched it before Gunyak, and the play uh, whistle goes outside of the, the center of uh, the pool line. Picard up the far side, couldn't get it out. Held in by Breslin. Back of the net, Martin's digging for it. Bangs his man against the wall. Here's Pearson, left corner. Pearson centers over to the near side, it comes. Now Martin, near hash marks. Left of the net, deflected behind by Martins. Rolled up the far side, Claude Boivin. Boivin, and it picked off by Breslin, gets it back, right side over the line, Metropolit. Near point, he pivots. High slot, now Picard into the near circle, and it's swatted away. Set it out in front, Martin with it. Plays it over to the far side. Martins, center circle, Breslin, chopped it in. This is gonna be icing, coming back to touch. Is Richards and we get the call, and with 113 remaining in regulation, the faceoff will come back into the Chicago zone, and I imagine we will see much more of Jamie Baker down the stretch. This is a key player, Jamie Baker, especially coming down the stretch of this game, coming down the stretch of the, of the regular season, and especially in the playoffs. You need a key, key, and, and a, an aggressive and good face-off man. And in key situations like this, this is where you need a man like that in certain situations. Surprisingly enough, I, uh, Coach Anderson has uh, LaRouche take the, the, the face off here. I guess uh, maybe by the stats they have, maybe LaRouche is having a better game. Up the far side now, Rogers. Center circle now, Rogers. Up the blue line on right wing with Malte. Right circle. It's blocked. And caroms over the glass into the crowd. I tell you, I just saw Dennis Vial just kind of cruise through that patch. And you just don't want to see anybody get hurt, regardless of the outcome. No, that's the thing. Somebody could go through there. Somebody could uh, you know, pull a groin, uh, slip, fall. You don't know what's going to happen in that because there's totally no no uh, uh, traction for the players off the because they have very sharp skates and they're going through that. They have no push up. They're still trying to do the repairs that they can. Grand Rapids opened up one nothing and two one leads. Steve Larouche on the power play and Alexander Godinik tied it in the second and third respectively. And the Wolves trying to fashion their ninth come from behind victory in the third period this season against Bob McNamara's group, who has played 11 straight one goal games. So this is nothing new for them. The Wolves lead the league, by the way, in one goal wins. Drop the top of the right circle, the Griffins in. 57 seconds remains in regulation. And Patterson pulls three on the faceoff. Tilly blew a tire over the line, high slot. Patterson had it swatted away by Godinia. Back of the net, LaRouche. Feeds up the far side, here's Rogers. Banked it ahead, oh, he had Malte, but he couldn't get there. Behind the Wolves net, LeBlanc leaves it. Tilly, up the middle, a feed for LaRouche. Backhands it ahead, out to center ice, Rogers. At the red line, he flips it into the near corner. 
Oh. Rogers skated right over that patch in the high slot as they battle in the near corner. Cole golfs it back to the Wolves zone. 23 seconds remains in regulation. Tilly, near corner of his own end. Rolls it around far side, couldn't get it out. Far point, Cole. Shoots, LeBlanc made that save and he holds. That doesn't look as easy as it does from up here, does it, one? No, it doesn't. It's a different situation when you're down on the ice seeing what's going on there. From up here, uh, Tilly could have uh, put the puck off the board straight to Gudiniak, but it went around to the boards. Gudiniak goes out to the point. A shot, a harmless shot actually from the point, but any shot at this time of the, uh, end of the game, you, you get worried. But a shot from the point, Ray LeBlanc just stops it, covers up, rather take his chances off the face off, get a change in the lineup, get, get some new fresh guys out on the ice. Now again, Jamie Baker's out taking the face off in a very, very important face off right here. Draw the far circle, the Wolves in with 13 seconds left. The Wolves win it back of the net. Vial rips it up the near side and couldn't get it out. Picard holds it in, back of the net with five seconds left. Cook backhands up the far side. Breslin couldn't get it out, two seconds left and the Wolves control and that'll do it for regulation. Well, the Chicago Wolves with another gutsy performance in the third period and they will walk out of here with at least a point as we head into the shootout. Shots on goal at the end of regulation in favor of the Wolves, 32 to 29. Now Wendell, how is this going to affect the shooters? I know you're a goaltender, but how will this affect the shooters from your vantage point if they're gonna have to use the end with the bad ice? I, I definitely, you got to come in at a different angle. Some some players are used to coming in straight in on the goalie and making a move from there. Some goalies come in from an angle, but I really think they're going to be using just one end. They're going to use one end, be a smart play by the by the referee, uh, maybe judge, showing some intelligence in the game <laughs> by uh, using using one end, uh, you know, the, the one good end, because nobody could co come through there. There's uh, chips in the ice everywhere uh, around that, that, that big hole in the ice, and if anybody comes through there, it's totally, totally at the disadvantage of the Chicago Wolves. Uh, uh, being, being in a, a shootout here, I think the advantage should go to the Wolves. Again, we had talked throughout the game that the, the Grand, Grand Rapids team would, is a very, very good defensive team. They play a tight game. They want to dump the puck in. They play tight. When you come to a shootout in this situation, you, you, the team with the offensive team in most times should win because you got more offensive players coming in on, on the shootout. Checking the third period scoring summary. Sponsored by Sears Craftsman, only one goal and it belongs to the Wolves. Alexander Godinik is fourth of the year at 821 from Baker and Cmac. Again, the final tally on the shots, 32 to 29 in favor of the Wolves. And this is a Rogaine hair raising finish. The Wolves this year, 11 and three in the shootout. That's the best record in the league. Grand Rapids by contrast, five and 10 in the shootout. However, Ian Gordon has only one of those losses. And again, they will use only one end as Gordon will set up in the opposite end that he played in the third period. That's the net to our right. He gets set, Ray LeBlanc will then exchange positions with him. The best shooters for the Wolves this year. Marinucci four of seven, Malte five of 11, Martins four of nine, Baker two of five, C-Mac two of seven. And it'll be Chris Marinucci first. Here's Marinucci up on the line, into the slot, forehand, back edge, shoots, he lost the puck! Very nice move by Chris Marinucci. Had Gordon going the, going the one way, cutting across, just lost the puck at the last moment. I'm curious if, if uh, Ian Gordon didn't get his stick on, on Marinucci, so he could try to knock the puck off. Glenn Metropolitan with a head of steam, angles to the left, cuts into the slot, forehand, backhand, shoots, LeBlanc at the far post, stopped him. Keep in mind, this is Ray's first look in the IHL this year at the shootout. Ray's known as being great in the shootouts. He's, he's great in practice on breakaways. He had a couple breakaways tonight. He's great at that. This is a, a key part of the, of the Chicago Wolves here in the shootout is, is Ray LeBlanc's goaltending. Here's Alexander Cmac. Cmac carries the puck over the line, slowly into the slot, forehand, backhand, he scores! Alex makes it look simple, skating in, not a lot of speed, just comes in, just with his quick hands, he makes a fake shot on his forehand, pulls it down, puts Gordon back in his net, just puts it to his backhand and throws it upstairs. Here's Michelle Picard, he grabs the puck, skips over the line, into the slot, forehand, shoots, the block stopped him out in front! Where was he trying to go? Picard coming in, I think he bounced up on end. I don't know if he did what he wanted to do on, on, the, on the 
on the shot because he came in, the puck kind of bounced, it took a little bit of time to kind of pull it back down flat. I thought he would go top glove, but he went to the blocker. Here's Malte, steams over the line, into the slot, forehand, shoots, Gordon the save. Malte took that shot from wall out of the net. Malte's trying to go top glove. I don't think he got a, a, in the particular spot he wanted to. So when Steve comes in, he's either looking five or he wants to go glove. And that's exactly what I think he's trying to go, but he kind of put it up into Ian Gordon's chest. Here's Sean Teller. He grabs the puck, speeds over the line, cuts into the left circle, walks in, shoots the block, stopped him clean out in front. We go to round four with the Wolves ahead, one nothing. And Steve LaRouche will be next. Number six, Steve LaRouche. LaRouche looking around, gets the signal, grabs the puck, accelerates over the line, into the slot, door in, shoots, he scores! Two nothing Wolves. Great play by great play by the Roosh. Seen Gordon go down with the Pojek laying down, head up, looks, looks, and that's a sign of a great goal uh, goal scorers to look like that. Richards has to score here. Richards over the line, into the right circle, forehand shoots off the post, and the Chicago Wolves have come from behind for a league high ninth time in the third period to record two points and deny Ian Gordon and 10,834. A chance at victory, and Ray LeBlanc mobbed right now. He stopped all four Griffin shooters and denied 27 of 29 in regulation. Phenomenal. Ray LeBlanc, again, unbelievable at breakaways, always in practice, great at breakaways. Breakaways in games, he stops almost every one of them. Shootouts last year, I always felt like when I went into a shootout myself, I go, hey, you want to put Ray in? I always ask the coach, you want to put Ray in? <laughs> I, shootouts aren't my forte, I don't enjoy them, but Ray is very, very good. He, he, he made some big saves here. And again, to the advantage of the Chicago Wolves, they get the more offensive players, which they've shown tonight with C-Mac making a nice play on his back end, and LaRouche looking up on the Pojack. As a goal, you don't want a guy like LaRouche with his hard shot. You don't want him to have the chance to shoot the puck like you can. You take a chance with the Pojack, and he made a very, very nice play going around for, for, the, for the second uh, shootout goal. And again, Ray LeBlanc making the, uh, big saves throughout the game, some breakaways, and with the shooter. 3-2 Wolves in the extra session over the Grand Rapids Griffins. Wendell and I will bring you back to GR in just a moment to wrap things up. This is Chicago Wolves Hockey. He switch sets. Here we go. Foul ball. Ooh, just got a little piece of it. Enough to stay alive. 0-2. Dave Kingman. No ball, strike two count. Here we go. Full them with a change up. Kingman strikes out. Took a little off of it. They've got out, out in front too far. So with two out now, Onaveras comes to bat in the bottom of the 10th inning. There's a check swing, fair ball, and that's it, the ball game is over. As Mike Schmidt throws out on Averis on a check swing which rolls fair down the third base side. Oh boy. A pretty flat finish. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. And a very sad finish to one of the greatest games anybody has ever seen anywhere. So in the inning for the Cubs, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. One of the few times today that anybody went down in order. Eastwick, by the way, comes in and gets credit for a great save. He faced six Cubs and retired them all. in a remarkable performance, not only in the shootout, but also in regulation, and that's Ray LeBlanc. We talked about Ray coming up big early. He came up big on a couple breakaways. One uh, hit the post on Patterson, shorthanded, then uh, the stop on on, uh, on Patterson, shorthanded a little bit later, and, and he made a great great plays throughout the game. He was, he was aggressive on top of his crease, and key saves uh, uh, on a power play earlier, 
Uh, about eight minutes left in the game, he, somebody went to the net, he, he po-checked the puck and the puck went into him, and I said, you want a couple key saves of the goalie game, and, and the breakaway, I think, on Patterson, that uh, save on the on the power play for the, the Grand Rapids was a key thing. And then in the shootout, you got to give him credit. Again, great on the breakaway is Ray on the shootout, and there he is, uh, you know, four for four. We're downstairs live with our number one star in this game, and that's Ray LeBlanc. First of all, Ray, congratulations. Second, what really keyed your performance in regulation and also in the shootout tonight? Well, I was just uh, try to get in front of everything, you know. I just try to be on my game and uh, try to control my rebounds. They're a good team. They're good around the net, and uh, just try to hold everything. Ray, as a goalie, I, I see how the confidence builds in you. You got a big save early, uh, from actually from the post on uh, Ed Patterson's breakaway, and then after that you made a humongous save. Again, uh, shorthanded on, on Patterson. Do you feel uh, making a big save early, does that uh, kind of propel yourself into uh, uh, being more aggressive, being more confident throughout the game? Yes, it does. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know for, for me, I have to have a big save early, you know, to get momentum. Um, I was struggling my first two games up here, and... Uh, you know, that last game in Indy, I, I had a good save in the beginning, and that helped me through. And, and tonight, you know, I thank God for the post. But, uh, yeah, that, that helped, got me going. And uh, in the blocker save off Patterson, it got me some uh, momentum and uh, confidence. Ray, you made several magnificent saves tonight. If you can, try and talk us through this one here against Grand Rapids. This was a team that tested you, even though they're not regarded as one of the better offensive teams in the league. Our Jiffy Lube save of the game. Well, yeah, I see him coming down. I just waited him out, waited him out. And uh, he's, he's looking like he was going to go high, but then he, he went to go, yeah. And uh, hit off my glove, hit the crossbar, thank God, and uh, he just wants to go off to the side. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I tried to wait him out. I know he's going wide. Then he decided to go back up high and uh, hit the crossbar and just watch to go around and make sure he didn't hit me in the back and go in. Ray, did it make any difference to you that you hadn't been involved in a shootout for a while? Uh, yeah, it does a little bit. You know, it's, this team has a lot of confidence. He won a lot of shootouts this year, so I knew if I could stop the first couple, uh, the team would take over and score some goals for me. Yeah, you know, it's you know, I was just uh, just try to do my job, and uh, they came through for me. And uh, you know, I, I gotta give them a lot of credit. Without them, you know, I couldn't couldn't win tonight. Ray, where's your confidence at after the performance you had on Thursday, beating your old team in Indianapolis, and the way you performed here before a sellout crowd, picking up a huge win for the Wolves? Uh, every game, you know, you, you uh, make some good saves and the team wins, you, you get more and more confidence. You know, I know Wendell's the same way. Once Wendell, it's, you know, he wins a couple games, look out, he's on a roll and you can't stop him. But, uh, you know, it helps a lot, you know, especially the, the guys around you, they get more confidence in you and you just, uh, just do your best. Defensively, Ray, tonight the Wolves dominant with the penalty kill. They did not allow Grand Rapids really a decent opportunity, even though they had a lot of chances with the man advantage. What were you seeing in front of you when the Wolves were shorthanded against a team that can threaten you on the power play? They came in sixth in the league. Well, they, they like to use the points. I've seen the first couple. And then uh, they, they try to, to jam the front of the net. Then uh, toward the later, like in the third period, they tried a little backdoor plays. And... Uh, I give the, the credit to the, the, the penalty killing team and they, they took the pass away and they, they kept them to the boards and any shot really they did have, I had a pretty good chance of seeing it and uh, I made a, the save and made sure the rebound was in the corner, I, I tied it up. Ray, when you came back to Chicago because of the injuries to Wendell Young, my partner here tonight, and Stefan Beauregard, you came in, you started against Long Beach, they had to pull you in the third period and then you followed up that start in Milwaukee and you had to get pulled in the first period there making five saves on eight shots. How difficult was it for you to try and come back from that mentally and perform the way you have in the last two games? Well, I just got to go into practice, you know, and just start over, all over again, and uh, just regroup and uh, try to make the first save in practice and uh, try not to think so much. You know, I think my biggest problem when I come up, uh, it's a slower league, United League, so, you know, they, I didn't have to think so much. You know, it's, a, it's an easier game, but uh, when I come up here, I, I was trying to compensate thinking too much, and uh, it threw me off. And uh, when you think too much in this game, you, you just make mistakes. You can ask Wendell. It's it's a it's an instinct game. you got to just play on instinct and uh, try not to think too much. That's exactly right. You, uh, I, I think you're, you know, you're a warrior, and you know that yourself on things. And you, and if somebody scores early, and I think the first game when you came back, you got scored on earlier, and I think that might have hurt your confidence a little bit. Is there anything in practice that uh, you actually worked at? Maybe uh, I noticed tonight you're very aggressive with the stick. Uh, uh, Pocheck with uh, about eight minutes left on a, on a power play by the Grand Rapids team, and also you're very aggressive on top of your crease. Is there anything else you uh, you worked at in practice? 
Well, I learned that one from you doing the poke check there in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I miss it, but you get it every time. I don't know how you do it. It's, uh, um, I don't know. I, it's, I, I try to be aggressive in practice. Try not to stay so deep in the net and, and, and try to do reaction things, reaction saves. But I try to be aggressive and force the shooter to, to go one way or the other. I think before I was just staying in and trying to be re reaction, and it just doesn't work. All right, thanks a lot, Ray, and again, congratulations on picking up your second win. You were just phenomenal tonight in picking up the victory over the Grand Rapids Griffins. With that win, LeBlanc is now 7-3-0, and he is the all-time active leading winner and wins in the IHL with 219. Let's take a look now at our Powerade check of the game. Unfortunately, it came against the Wolves and by a Griffins player here, Wendell. A very aggressive game tonight, some hitting, good hitting up early. Gudiniak goes back for the puck, and one of the Grand Griffins players comes in and hits him very hard. When you're a defenseman going back for the, for the puck and you're in a situation that you have your back to the play, you don't know who's coming behind you. You hope your defenseman uh, helps you out from the backside, maybe holding the guy up a little bit. But again, with the obstruction rules, you kind of the, the, uh, your, your defensive partner is kind of going to back off that because he doesn't want to cause a penalty for uh, obstruction. But, but again, very aggressive uh, play by uh, both teams tonight. Wendell, we talked about the Wolves newcomers at the top of the broadcast. Steve LaRouche and Mark Rogers, they made an impact on Thursday night, and they make it again. Here is our butt ice play of the game. You know, you got to be uh, you got to be really uh, happy with the, with the acquisition of uh, Kevin Shoveldayf has done, going to the net, uh, creating a lot of uh, chances for themselves. That was one of the biggest thing uh, so far. They've been very very uh, aggressive. That whole line of Maltes, Larouche, and Rogers being so aggressive going to the net, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of opportunities in the first period, second period, and third period, and uh, some nice saves by Gordon, some uh, just missed passes, and in a situation where they have really uh, uh, created something for themselves. They're confident, and they know if one guy goes uh, to the net, another guy's going to the net, and somebody's backing them up. And uh, I'm really impressed, more so, uh, actually with the back checking of the LaRouche and Rogers too. When you have an offensive player, sometimes you you, you kind of think that, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be one-sided going uh, one way. But no, they made some great plays coming back, and uh, in Indianapolis. That brings up Mike Vail, a right fielder. The end of five, it's still the Cardinals two, Montreal nothing. There's a base hit. And the Hazers hold at second. So Vail slices one, played on the hop by McBride. And that brings up Bill Buckner. There's a base hit, and a run comes in. That one just made it, just made it over Rudy Mioli's head in a very, very short right field. It was one of those spinners that looped out there, and it just barely made it. Dave Kingman. So it's seven to one, Phillies. That's it. Way back there. Stay there, baby. Back, 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 back. Hooray! A way to the the homer for Dave Kingman. Man, that one was almost on the roof of that building across the street. Woo, boy, did he tag it. So the first four Cubs have scored. There's a ground ball, a good stop by Pete Rose, and he makes the unassisted put up for just a hot minute. It looks like Gonaveras is going to be on, too. That took a little doing to make that stop. Nice work by Pete. And that'll bring up the center fielder, Jerry Martin. There's a base hit. Could be an extra base hit. There goes Martin heading for second. He may try for three here. Nope, he's going to hold up at second. So Jerry Martin has just doubled to right center field. Hey, how about this ball game? Uh, how's this for an opening inning? Here comes Sturrett out, and it looks like that will be all for Lurch. So neither pitcher has survived the first inning, and Doug Bird is going to come in. That's uh, Danny Ozark asking for the ball. 
And here comes the fellow from Kansas City, Doug Bird. There's a fly ball, right center field, and it is grabbed out there by McBride. And that will bring up the second baseman, Sizemore. There's a drive, left field, and that's going to bring in a run. Here comes Gary Martin as Ted Sizemore laces a good shot to left center field. Martin scoring from second, and that makes the score now Philadelphia 7, the Chicago Cubs 5. Sizemore on first base, and Donnie Moore is due up. There's a drive, right center field. That's going to be all the way to the center field wall out there. And watch Ted Sizemore score on this one as Donnie Moore decides to go for third. His ball is slow. He is safe. Wait a minute. The ball is against the dugout fence. And had it gone into that dugout and almost did it, didn't miss the entrance very far, he would have been across the plate. As it is, Donnie Moore has just tripled one in. And the score of this ball game now is Philadelphia 7, the Chicago Cubs 6, and the tying run is on third base, and DeJesus is up. Oh, there's a high fly to right. And McBride waits for this one. He's got it. Hey, that's got to give him trouble. And so that ends the inning. But in the inning, both ball clubs sent 10 men to the plate. And the Cubs, <laughs> six runs. On seven hits, no errors, and a man left. And at the end of one inning, Philadelphia's. Toronto's tied it up with three to three, Toronto at Cleveland. Fly ball, short right center, dropping kind of fast. It is in and out of Mike Bale's glove. He tries for a sit down catch out there, and Maddox winds up on second. That's a base hit. Maddox leading off second. Fly ball, short left, dropping fast, base hit. And here's the runner racing for the plate. He is safe. Bob Boone taking second on it. And they're going to charge an error on Kingman on that one on the throw. Mjolnir was called out on strike. She was the first man more faced when Donnie came on in the first inning. Fly ball. Center fielder Martin goes back for this one. The man on second tags up. He's going to go for third. And the throw is just a little late. So Bob Boone takes third after the catch. Infield pulled in. Low and away. There's the Cub Brain Trust. Peanuts, Herman, and Mike. That's a ball. Oh, man, he walked the pitcher. Now, come on, Donnie. That was your out. Now, of course, the infield still has to play in. With Ben on first and third, and one out, and a dangerous man, Bake McBride, is up. Boone on third, Bird on first. 
One out. Drive the batter. Low underway. Ball one. That's Hernandez in the bullpen. Fly ball. Dropping fast in short center. Another blooper hit. Another run in. Oh boy. So Boone scores. Bird goes to second. With one away, Bo is the batter now. And the score is now Philadelphia nine, the Cubs six. Okay, Boa at bat, two on, one out. There's a shot to center field. That's going to bring one in, it looks like. Nope, DeMars holds up the pitcher Bird at third. That loads the bases for Pete Rose. Bird on third. Right on second, Bow on first, and Pete Rose the batter. There's a fly ball left center. Look out. That's going to wipe the bases clean. One run is in. Bird is in. Here comes McBride. Boa decides to hold up at third as Rose doubles, and we've got ourselves a real marathon today. Willie Hernandez is being called in. Then on second and third, and they're going to put him on and pitch to Unser, who has one for two. Ball two, three and four coming up. Here's Dell. The bases are full. Boa, Rose, Schmidt, third, second, first. There's the tap down the first base side, and that will be one run in and an unassisted put out by Buckner. So, with a dribbler down the first base side, Dell Unser bats one in. Larry Boa crossing the plate. So Pete Rose is now on third. Mike Schmidt is on second. There's a high fly to left. That's pretty deep back there. That's going back. The wind's got it. Back she goes. Home run. Oh boy, the 17 mile an hour wind did it for Maddox. And that's his second home run in two days. So now three more come in. Pete Rose shaking hands with him. So now the score of the ball game is Philadelphia 15, the Cubs six. Well, it was seven to nothing in the first inning. Then the Cubs got back six. And Boone is on first base. I guess Hernandez plunked him. So the seven run inning didn't appear big enough to Philadelphia to be safe. So they thought they better go out and get eight more. There's a drive to left base hit. Boy, oh boy. So Mioli comes up with a hit. And now here comes the pitcher batting for the second time in the inning, Doug Bird. Foul ball. Strike one. Philadelphia 15 runs on 14 hits. Cubs six runs, nine hits. Foul ball.
strike. He got him and finally, finally retires the side. In the inning, eight runs. On seven hits. There was an error. And so as we go now to the Cub half of number three. Base hit. So Larry Boyle whacks the one and two pitch right between Oliveros and DeJesus. And that'll bring up first baseman Pete Rose. Came to bat with the bases full and doubled. So left center the last time up. There's a drive to right center field. That's going to be another double for him. Maybe three this time. Here comes Boa rounding third, and he goes into the plate easily. And the score of the ball game now is Philadelphia 16 and the Cubs 6. Maddox hit a home run the last time up. Get a homer and a double in the same inning. And he's going to get himself another double right here. Maybe three. There he goes. One run in. Pete Rose scores. It's another double by Maddox. And Unser stops at third. Another run across then for the Phillies. Base hit for Bale. He's three for three. No errors, nobody left at the end of four. The score of the ball game. The score of this crazy ball game. Philadelphia, 17. The Chicago Cubs, nine. That's the 18th hit for Philadelphia. Now here's Bo at bat. He doubled in the first inning. He singled in the third. He singled in the fourth. Men on first and second. The pitch popped up. It could be trouble. Over Buckner's head, the wind carries it in play. It drops in front of Bale, bounces away from him, goes to the wall. Espinosa will score as he comes around with Buckner's throw, hits past foot, but Hernandez is there. It's a double for Boa. 18 to 9 as Espinosa scores. Rose batting right handed. Runners on second and third. Swing ground ball to the left of the shortstop. Aces bobbles it, picks it up, Ken drops it again. Rose is safe on the air by the Jesus. And McBride scores. Five 
fly ball. Center field, Martin is there. Boa tagging up at third. Here comes Rose to third. The tag by Anaveras is missed as Rose gets up and claps his hands because he made a fadeaway slide and Anaveras dove for him but missed the tag. Here's the tag up after this line drive to Martin in center field. Martin concedes Boa. That's Boa scoring. And here's the play at third. As Andavares dives and just misses him. And the umpire was right over the play. So credit the third base umpire being right over the play so he could see whether Rose was tagged or not. Sacrifice fly by Unser. Scores Boa with a 20th run. Curve ball, swing, fly ball, deep left field. Kingman going back on the warning track. Reaches up and makes the catch. Here comes Rose in the score. Four run score. Philadelphia, wait till I get the computer out. 21, Cubs nine. Michael Jack Schmidt quite prominently. The lineup you guys had with Schmidt, with Pete Rose. A viewer. Now's the time. Got to get some base hits. The Cubs have 13. Add to their batting average. Line drive, base hit, left field. Unser has it. Throws it in, and foot is on first base. That is the 14th Cub hit. Here's Sizemore, who has two. Ground ball to Smith, and he bobbles it. He was handcuffed on the ball, and it wasn't hit hard. He just wasn't ready, and when you get into one of these ball games, anything can happen. Dillard looking for his first hit of the year. Curve ball low. McGraw will throw everything but his glove up to the plate. Curveball, screwball, fastballs, let ups. Gives you that big motion, good overhand delivery. There's the fastball, but it was low. Philly's played Dillard straight away. High ball three. You never know in a ball game. Wouldn't it be something? It could be the miracle of Clark and Addison for 79. There's ball four. The bases are loaded. Here's De Jesus at bat. One for two. Way inside with that breaking pitch. Ball one, and McGraw has a little trouble. The pitch. High ball two. Three, no strikes. Three and no to Eva. He tried to curve him, and he loses it. How about that? Eva walks. Now he's credited with an RBI. One hit deep to right field. Hey, hey, kiss it goodbye. A grand slammer by Butker. And four more runs are in. Five for the inning. And uh, it is now 21 to 14. Believe it or not. Here's Kingman 
That's high, ball one. Now, there has been eight home runs, Hip, in this ball game. Don't go away. Low. Kingman is concentrating now on making McGraw throw a strike. Five runs in, one out. Oh, he threw that screwball and it landed about 12 feet in front of the plate. He didn't want to throw that pitch to Kingman. If he did, that's exactly what he was going to do with it. Tug McGraw getting a welcoming from the Cubs. Low ball for him. center field it's going it's going and you can kiss it goodbye Terry Martin with a two run home run his third of the season his 16th and 17th RBIs seven runs here in the fifth inning it's now 21 to 16 you gotta be kidding I'm I'm not kidding First pitch to Dillard, swing and a high chopping ball, deep short. Boa has it, fires the first, but Dillard beats it up. Dillard opens up the sixth inning for the Cubs with an infield hit. Cubs 18th hit. When this ball bounced over Smith's head, it was going to be a very difficult play for Boa. He takes it on the outfield grass. Couldn't get any velocity at all on his throw. And Dillard beat the play easily. Here's to Jesus. One for two today. One hit deep to center field. It's over Gross's head going deep. It's against the wall. Dillard round second will go to third. And to Jesus holds up at second. That ball found Gross playing shallow. And especially with the wind blowing out. He knows better than that. It was a line drive, so he didn't have time enough to back up and get under it. There's Gross going back as fast as he can, but the line drive is over his head. You see, had that ball been hit higher up in the air, he could have motored under it and made the catch. Now, runners on second and third, nobody out, and here's Vale. Cubs trail by five. Swing and a miss. And this fella starts swinging and he leaves the breakfast table in the morning to come out to the ballpark. Pops it foul as Reed really sidearmed Bale that time. Buckner's due up next. In the fifth inning, he hit a grand slammer. He singled in the first and the second. Vale, who's up at the plate now, has three for four. Low. All one strike two. We still have a lot of action coming by the men in white. Sixth inning. Pick up those two runners on the base pads. Into the dirt, but Boone does a very fine job in blocking it, backhanding that ball to prevent the runners from advancing. Bale wants him to look at that baseball. The count is two and two. Cub fans talking it up, cheering their idols on. They never give up. Neither do the Cubs.
Ground ball to Boa. Runner's going to score. Boa goes to first. Dillard scores. De Jesus advances to third. So credit Bale with his sixth RBI. Now we're only down by four. There's the scoreboard. If you can't get bingo out of that, look at those numbers. 21 to 17. Here's Buckner back. Low, ball one. Kingman drew up next. Smith is playing even with the bag at third. Ground ball to any other infielder except the pitcher, the Jesus should score. Ground ball foul into the bullpen down the right field line. Still in this ball game. It's Philadelphia 21, Cubs 17, or Phillies four, Cubs nothing. And the Cubs have a runner on third. You take it any way you want to. Low almost hit Buck and he had to jump over that fastball. Ball two, strike one. White Sox two, Oakland nothing at the end of three at Oakland. Cleveland defeated Toronto eight to three. Montreal two, St. Louis two, suspended game. Ball three, strike one. And the big man leading in the on deck circle. <laughs> Fouled out of play, Buck going after that three and one pitch, wanting to pick up that runner. It's now three and two. the ball over the pitcher's head. De Jesus will score. Boas throw to first. Gets Buck going down the line very fast. But the run scores. So now it's 21 to 18. Watch Buckner. Not going to take that pitch. It's close to the strike zone. Throws his bat at the ball and tops it over the pitcher's head. And here's the standing ovation for number 10, Kingman, and also for Buckner coming back to the dugout. At five RBIs for Buckner, he ties Kingman at the present time. Hey, kiss him goodbye. It is gone. Oh, I thought he hit the other one hard. That one's in Milwaukee. That's, it hit the front porch of the third house across Waveland Avenue. Man, oh man, isn't that something? That is unreal. Kingman's third home run of the ball game, a standing ovation. And let me tell you, it's now 21 to 19. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we go now to the Cub half of number eight. Wouldn't it be something if the Cubs didn't have to bat in the ninth inning of this marathon? Huh? Ball one now to De Jesus. The Cubs need three to get back in the ball game. Ron Reed, the pitcher. Ground ball. Backhand stop. It's going to be close. He's got it beat now. Face hit. Larry Boa gave it the big try. And he has one of the strongest throwing arms of all the shortstops, but De Jesus is the one guy who could beat that one out with his great speed. And we're going to get a pinch hitter now. Scott Thompson will bat for Burris. Scott Thompson batting. 
325 hitter. Scott has 13 hits this year, four doubles, the rest singles. 